We have praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of Yahushua Hamashiach. Yeah, that chapter you was gonna read. I don't know what it was. You know what it's called? Yeah, yeah John five thirty nine. That's what it's called. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Mark chapter nine, probably about verse seventeen. Ready? Yeah, yeah. You can go ahead, sir. By all means. It says, "Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men." But I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Yeah. How can you believe which receive honor one from another, and not and seek not the honor that come from Elohim? All right, make that Mark nine and fourteen. Nine and fourteen. They Mark say, what chapter nine, verse. Oh, I'm telling you. They don't move that fast. They're not, they not robots. And I already said it, but we started that first. So yeah, but me. Yeah, excuse. Yeah, I know you broke wind, but they're not ready. You ready? Yeah, he's ready now. Right, nine. 9 and 14. Come on, man. It says, and when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with him. <coughs> and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluting him. Mm -hmm. And he asked the scribes, what questions you with them? So yeah, what you got? What what type of question you got? Let's see what they ask. Go ahead. And one of the multitude answered and said, "Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which is a dumb spirit." He got a dumb. He got a. And you know what a dumb spirit gonna be in this instance, right? Y'all know what that is. You know what it mean when he say he got a dumb spirit? Use the lack of communication. Yeah, he can't talk. He mute. Go ahead. It says that wheresoever he. Taketh him, he te teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. What did the master say? And he answered him and said, O faithful generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Mm -hmm. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, mm -hmm. and he fell on the ground. And wallow foaming. Mm -hmm. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? He said, Of a child. He had it for a long time. Go ahead. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Paul, get that first Peter chapter 5, man, verse 6, real fast. It said that this dumb spirit, this, this evil spirit that was in this child had been trying to kill him the whole time. After that, you know, we're just, when, when you look at what's in John chapter 10, how the master say the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, you're looking at literally that this spirit is trying to kill this young man and destroy him. And you sit back and look at it, there are uh, evil spirits and people that move about trying to destroy you. You know what I'm talking about? Listen to what he tell you, though. And then we come right back to Mark 9. 1 Peter 5 and 6. And sometimes you, even your own self is trying to destroy yourself. It's one of the instances why you got to have self-control. A lot of people don't have self-control. They can't control their thoughts. They can't control their behavior. And so, therefore, they continue in the same pathway where they always been going. This is like, well, it came from my memory. But the photograph that I shared earlier, and I tell you all this plenty of times, the book says if you don't have control over your own spirit, you're like a city with no walls broken down. A lot of people always look for the most high to do things for them when you got to control yourself. He's an attribute. His attributes is self-control. He is a. He has temperance because he had control not to kill Yasharal numerous times when he could have killed him. He controlled himself and didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? By showing mercy and compassion. So you can't look for him to control you. You have to follow the attributes of Elohim and take them on. We don't want to take these things on. And it's come from, to be told, to a certain extent, a lack of faith. You don't really believe you can control yourself. Or you don't really want to control yourself. So therefore, you allow your base desires to dictate what you're going to do. Go ahead. Five and six, first Peter. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of Elohim, that he may exalt you. This is the first power. way that you're going to be able to exercise some manner of self-control. Because the master humbled himself under the father's hand and allowed the father to dictate his actions. You know what I'm saying? This is how he was exalted. If you want to be able to control yourself, you have to humble yourself. The first thing to be able to humble yourself, you have to acknowledge that you have a problem. You know what I'm saying? That's the purpose of why you confess your sins when you get immersed or why people confess their sins, period. You know what I'm saying? You acknowledge you have a problem. That's why the book say confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. If you're confessing your faults, 
then you can have a chance that you've acknowledged what you need to, to have healed. If you don't acknowledge it, then it can never be healed. Therefore, you can never control it. Because somebody might be going through the same thing you're going through. They can tell you, this is how I overcame it. This is what gave me the ability to do it. This is what I've seen through the word uh, in certain instances that allowed me to say, hey, I don't want to go in that course of behavior. Keep it to yourself. It's not going to be able to happen. You're going to try to figure it out on your own, and you're going to crash. That's why he said that two are better than one. Go ahead. Casting all your care upon him, mm -hmm. for he cares for you. Yes, he does. Be sober and be vigilant, mm -hmm. because your adversary, the ab your adversary, Hashatan, is as a roaring lion walked about seeking who may, he may destroy. This is what he was trying to do to this young man. He was trying to destroy him, yet that young man was steadily present. He was present for the purpose of the compassion of Allahim to be manifested on him at this particular time. And also to manifest something in his parents that was lacking. Let's come back to Mark chapter 9 and see what that was. Because I tell, I've been telling you numerous times, man, faith is the biggest problem amongst all men. It's, to keep the commandment, truth be told, is very easy if that's what you desire to do. It's not difficult. You know what I'm saying? That's if that's what you desire to do. Because there's a lot of things that everybody desires to do that they're able to do quite easily because that's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? You put prior, you prioritize and move with diligence to the things that you want to do. If it's not something you don't want to do, then you put it on the back burner. It's not that important. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to give it the same maximum effort that you would because you don't really care about doing it. People who don't keep this man's commandments is because they don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? But faith is a whole different matter because that's a matter of the heart. You know what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with behavior. You either believe it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? You either got your trust in it or you don't. Your hope is set in it or it's not. And if it's weak or if it's small, then the adversary can send things through to cause that to be shaken, to cause you to go in this direction. You know what I'm saying? See, his parents, they didn't fall off sitting back looking at it. They say, man, this man here, if he can't do it, it can't be done. That's how they were looking at it. Because the disciples couldn't do it, so they're looking at it. If Hamashiach can do it, if he can't do it, it's over with. Go ahead. You stop in uh. Verse 22. Read it again, though. It says, And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And what did the master say? He said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Read it again. It says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Read it again. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. That's the thing that really messes up. He said, If you can believe, Everything is possible to the person that believes. You know what I'm saying? Remember why I said that? Give me Matthew chapter 19, man, about verse 25. After Matthew 19, 25, John 14 and 4. That's the whole key thing you got to look at. If you can believe, then anything is possible. Do you know what I'm saying? Anything is, it was it was possible that they were delivered from Misraim and the firstborn of Misraim was killed because they believed that he would do exactly what he said if they put that blood of that lamb on that doorpost. Do you know what I'm saying? If they believe that, though, it was done. If you can, you notice there's a lot of people, they didn't get anything from y'all because they did not believe that he could do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Those that believed they could get in the land, they got in it. Those that didn't, they died in the wilderness. Do you know what I'm saying? Anything is possible and is able to them that believe. Elijah believed when he seen Elisha get, I mean, Elisha believed when he seen Elijah get taken up in the Shamahim. He said, man, check this out. I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, well, you don't ask the hard thing. He said, nevertheless, if you see me get taken up, I'm going to handle that for you. Do you know what I'm saying? You got to believe. Most people don't believe. I've been doing this now as far as dropping work on the street. For, uh, what this is, 2017? For five years. And I've been screaming that from the time that I started putting work on the street. Niggas don't believe. You know what I'm saying? You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. You can swing it how you want to swing it. But at the end of the day, people don't believe. That's why they don't have no power with Elohim. That's why things don't get manifested. But look at the next thing. I'm going to read the book. He already gone. In verse 24, it says, Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Master, I believe. Help thou me with my unbelief. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the, that's, the, that's the humility that this man showed. He said, help me with my unbelief. I believe you, but my faith is very, very small. You know what I'm saying? And that's what most people don't want to do that because you don't want, you feel like you're going to be ridiculed if you say your faith is small. You know what I'm saying? He could care less what the other people around him said. He told this man, I believe you, but help me with my unbelief. You know what I'm saying? That's Because, you see, you, we got the same mentality you had when you were in school. You don't want nobody to think you're stupid. 
Do you know what I'm saying? You don't want nobody to thank you this or you thank you that, so you keep it to yourself. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to ask a question because people are like, how did dumb nigga don't know that? That man didn't care nothing about any of that. Do you know what I'm saying? He said, I believe, but help me with it because it's weak. Do you know what I'm saying? And how does that help with it? So it's 22 ways you can help somebody with their faith. Number one is by the example of an individual who actually lived the word and then actually hearing the word, actually being shown the word. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way that you can help it. Yeah, he can see that that spirit get cast out of his son. That doesn't mean he's going to believe after the fact. Because those people saw this man work many miracles and still didn't believe. You know what I'm saying? Then I would tell him for y'all came in here. Tongues and miracles are for people who don't believe. Prophesying is for those who believe. The word is for those who believe. Signs and miracles are for people who don't. Go ahead, man. What I got you? John 14? 19. 19 Matthew 19, 19 and 25. Look, Mike! Matthew 19 and 25. It said, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Well, back me up to 23 then. It says, then you just said to the disciples, Verily I say unto you, what he say? that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of Shamayim. Yeah. And against I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter to the kingdom of Allah. And what else? When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can be saved? And what did the master say? And he and he beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with Allah. All things are possible. Anything is possible in Yah if you set your hope and your trust in Him. That's why we've been talking about rolling away your works or committing your works to Him and He'll establish your thoughts. It's impossible with a man. You can't do it on your own. You know what I'm saying? But with Yah, it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, and show you why it's possible. But you got to strengthen yourself in the Word, though. That's where your strength derived from. We seek to get strength from any and everything other than the source of where strength emanates from. You know what I'm saying? You want to overcome sin? Then latch on to the word. You want to overcome yourself? Then latch on to the word. You know what I'm saying? Because you're human. You're, you're dust and ashes. You're flesh and blood. So negative thoughts and feelings will enter into your brain. You know what I'm saying? This is why he say to cast them down in the imaginations and strongholds and bring them into captivity. To, to Mashiach because he think you have to move away from the thought process that because you deal with the word that nothing negative can happen to you that negative thoughts will not come to you that negative emotions will not well up in you or you will be placed in negative situations the only way that you can even have any metal to show for victory is to be put in a position of adversity you know what I'm saying? If everything is smooth, you're not going to learn anything from that. Therefore, you can't attain any victory. The master attained the victory by standing strong through adversity. You know what I'm saying? That's where the medal of character is met at. The key thing is, is that if you go through something, whatever it is in your life, and I done told y'all this before, if you didn't learn nothing from it, it was a wasted life experience. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You just wasted your time. If you're making the same mistakes over and over again, you're not learning from that experience. You know what I'm saying? You just wasted whatever manner of your time it was in your life. And we don't need to do that. We just need to take the time to learn what you're supposed to learn. You know what I'm saying? Learn what you're supposed to learn, take it with you, and execute better on the next go-round. That's what you're supposed to look at from failure. You know what I'm saying? Some failures hurt more than others. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's life, though. Go ahead. First Six and nine. Know ye not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Uh -huh. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, mm -hmm. nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, mm -hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Well, what did he say after that, though? And such were some of you. Such as were some of you. Go ahead. But ye are washed. You what? But ye are washed. And what up? But ye are sanctified. What up? But ye are justified mm. in the name of the master. Yehusha. See, that's what we were talking about last night. It wasn't justified in the keeping of the law. Say you were justified in the name of a mashiach. You know what I'm saying? Of which where the faith of Elohim resides at. But you notice that that's where you get your justification from. If you justified in his name and you sanctified in his name, then this is what makes this possible. You know what I'm saying? Because look at all these things. He asked who can be saved. That man just mentioned all these people that did all of these things. And he just told you that they were saved. How? Because they were washed, set apart, and justified by the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. So in Allahim, it was possible. 
You know what I'm saying? With man, it's not possible because man cannot wash himself, man cannot sanctify himself, and man cannot justify himself. That's why he said you seek to set about your own righteousness, you're trying to justify yourself. You know what I'm saying? You didn't shed no blood for yourself, so you can't save yourself from that. You can't sanctify yourself because y'all got to sanctify you. So it's impossible with man, but with Elohim is possible, but you have to lend yourself to him. If you don't lend yourself to him, then it's going to be impossible. Do you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, it's a sit back. Give me uh, Ezekiel 37. 37 5. And then we'll get John 14 right after that. And then swing to one of these kings. I just had to hit this real quick, like, man. Before we get into it, because that was your ancestors' problem the whole time. They didn't really believe. So they were seeking justification from bringing sacrifices at set certain times and paying tithes at set certain times and showing up for feast days at set certain times but their heart was never set right with the man. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's what their problem was. Go ahead. Ezekiel 37. And 5. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you mm -hmm. and ye shall live. Mm -hmm. And I will lay shinnels upon you mm -hmm. and bring up flesh upon you mm -hmm. and cover you with skin mm -hmm. and put breath in you and ye shall live. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came up upon them, and the skins covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Go ahead. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, thus said Jehovah Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. That they may live. Breathe upon these who? These slain. What you think this means when he say breathe upon these slain that they may live? To a certain extent. I think the one uh, you die in Yeah, I mean to a certain extent, but I ain't talking about no physical death. Give me John 6 and 63. That's correct though. See what I'm talking about what we, I mentioned yesterday. You have to slay yourself before you even die. Because you're correct. Both of y'all were correct. You ain't said nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? My mind just going in a different direction. Because, yeah, that is a resurrection of the dead. But you also can be slain and get breath to live while you're still alive. You know what I'm saying? You can be slain and still get breath to live while you're still alive. It's a lot of people, they haven't slain themselves, so they still alive. I mean, they're dead, though they live. You want to be dead so you can live. Well, yeah, you got it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. John 6. And 63. Listen to what he say. It is the rule out that quickeneth. Yes, sir. The flesh profit is nothing. Yes, sir. The words that I speak unto you, they are rule out. And they are life. Now remember in John chapter 11 about verse 25 He said he the resurrection and the life Whoever live and believe in me Shall never die Believe this Now when you turn around and you sit back And you look at how the, re the, the emergent Is semblance of you being slain Do you understand what I'm saying That is you being slain Then you're supposed to receive the Ruach So you can live you know what I'm saying? So then you have to sit back and look at it. It's a lot of people get immersed, but they have not been slain. You really didn't get slain. You still alive. And Jose, he tell you, I hewed them by the words of the prophets. What actually put Hamashiach on the stake was the word is what put him on the stake. Do you know what I'm saying? And it was the word that brought him off the stake. What's going to put you on the stake? Give him Philippians 2 and 7. The word is what's going to put you on the stake, and the word is what's going to give you life. So if you don't die into this man now, if you don't die to your sins now, then you can't live later. Now, like I say, to get to that point where y'all talking about the resurrection of the dead, that you done die and to live, you have to already have been slain. You know what I'm saying? You've got to remember what he told you in 1 Peter. He said, he that suffered in the flesh cease from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to sin. This is showing you how with men this is impossible, but with Elohim it's possible. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you can't slay yourself on your own. You don't have the word or the power to do it. But with the word itself, now Elohim has made it possible for you to lay your life down. Now after that, he can make it possible for you to pick it up again. But you have to you have to be able to trust and put your hope in him. If you don't do that, you're not gonna be able to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Because I know sometimes you can get a little weary. You know what I'm saying? You feel like, oh, man, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I done told you before, most negativity only comes from the adversary. You know what I'm talking about? It's very few times what I can say in these days and time. Because we know in the word, there have been times where he done came to people and told them, oh, nigga, you good as dead. Do you know what I'm saying? And it ain't what nothing they, they could do to change that. That was just what it was. You know what I'm saying? He told Ahab straight up and down, but you good as dead, homie. You good as dead. You know what I'm saying? Don't even worry about it. Saul, you can wink, wrong, wine, whatever you want to do. You ain't keen no more, though. And there wasn't nothing he was going to say to reverse that. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't got to the verse that just popped in my head about it in Ezekiel. But you're going to see why. Because sometimes we look like while we've been sitting in here and you've been pining away in your iniquities, you feel like, what's the point and what's the purpose? You know what I'm saying? That don't come from him. He told you that in Ezekiel 33. He said, you know what I'm saying? We pounded, what shall we do? He told you, cast away from you all your transgressions so iniquity won't be your ruin. You know what I'm saying? Which is dealing with the covering of yourself or the circumcision of the heart. You have to circumcise your heart. It's a lot of people in the world, they ain't circumcised their heart. They just want to do stuff. They just want to talk about stuff. They want to be seen. So you can always tell niggas that want to be seen because they latch on to things that bring attention to themselves. You know what I'm saying? The master didn't do anything to bring attention to himself. He just was doing what he do, and the attention came to him. You know what I'm saying? You got to realize, it's a lot of prophets in this word that you don't even know what their names are. You know what I'm saying? But you don't even know what their names are. Because it wasn't never about what the name was. It's just certain men he left a memorial for. You don't know if the prophets he didn't name, if they were greater than the men who were mentioned. Because Hebrews 11 said, it would fail for him to speak of all these. Do you know how many books it would be if he mentioned every prophet? Go ahead, man. Philippians 2. It said, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself, mm. and became obedient unto death, even the death of the state. That's what faith will cause you to do, it humble yourself to realize that it's somebody greater than you, whom you need, and have to place your hope into, that you have to trust, knowing that you're not in control of every single solitary aspect of your existence. That's why he said, without faith it's impossible to please him. Because you have to believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek it. See, a lot of us don't feel like he's going to reward you for seeking him. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why people don't feel like that because they may not seem to be getting the things in this natural life that they desire. So they don't feel like there's a reward for their labor. You know what I'm saying? Why I ain't got this car? Why I ain't got this job? Why am I not married? Why don't I have any kids? Why is my money so low? Why does this happen to me? Why do I feel like this and feel like that? When the book tell you there were men that walked around destitute and afflicted, living in caves, and it said the world was not worthy of these men. You know what I'm saying? You'll have people tell you, oh, God can't be with you. You ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? If God was with you, you wouldn't be going through that. See, you holding on to the curses. See, look what I got over here. See, God is with me. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about no Christians neither. You know what I'm saying? You got bruises that walk around and they look at it that way. So then when somebody is going through something in the word, they feel like, well, these people over here getting this. Why am I not getting that? Then they feel like y'all done forsook them. And this will call people to just go on here and put it on down and lean to the lust of their flesh to their own destruction. Go on here to finish this Ezekiel 37. That's why people turn from the word to go after what they want. Because they feel like Yah is not giving me what, what I want. But Acts 14, 22 told you to be steadfast in the faith. Because through much tribulation, we got to enter into the kingdom of uh, Elohim. Everybody's not going to have the same. Some people are going to have a little bit of change. And some people ain't. You know what I'm saying? Some people are going to have it hard. And some people ain't. That doesn't mean the person who had it hard is going to get a greater spot in the kingdom than the person who didn't. You know what I'm saying? Might have a greater purpose for your usage for him, for what you're dealing with. That other person might just have to be like he like he mentioned when he said, well, what is this man going to do? He said, what if I will if I tell him, tarry here till I come? What is that to you? You know what I'm saying? It might be some people he tell them, just sit right there and chill out, baby, till I get here. You ain't got to do a thing. They kick your feet up and hold it down. You know what I'm saying? You got some people, he take them through a lot because I got something for you to do. You know what I'm saying? And we be looking at word about what y'all sending this person to do instead of doing just like what he told Peter. What is it to you if I told him sit here till I come? What that got to do with you? That ain't got nothing to do with you. You worrying about the wrong thing. Don't be worried about what I told him to do. Worry about what I told you to do. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's what Brew get it messed up at. They worrying about what the next man doing. Let that man do his work and you do yours. Go ahead, man. Ezekiel 37 and 10. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied that he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me, What did he say? Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Yashara. They the whole house. Behold, they say, our bones are dry. They dry. And our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. That's how our people feel right now. They say, our hope is lost. We're cut off for our parts. What did he tell them, though? Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Behold, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and I will cause you to come out of your graves. He'll do what? I will cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Yashara. Now give me that first Timothy 5 and 6. Now it's going to mention a woman, but the reason why I mention it is what he stated. He said, I'm going to open your grave. Because how we say, our hope is lost. He done cut me off. What, what hope do I have? He done told you, I'm going to open your graves though. I'm going to open them up so you can live. Which goes why we read the John 6, 63. It's the Ruach that quickening. Man, to open this thing up so you can live. We go back to what we were talking about with the rolling away of the works. Uh, rolling your thoughts or rolling your works to him. If you roll away the sin, he'll open the grave. He open the grave, you can come out a new creature. Go ahead. First Timothy 5 and 6. Listen to what he's saying. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Now you can sit back and look at it. This is why our people said they were cut off for they, they parts. The white told him he had to open their graves because they were living in pleasure. They were living in sin, so they were dead even though they lived. You know what I'm saying? Now, he's trying to turn around and tell you that I'm going to open that grave and bring you out of that grave. You know what I'm saying? Let's look and see why. First, first Peter chapter 2, man, verse 22. Because this man bared your sins in his body, went in the grave, and the grave was open so you could come out of the grave and be with him. That's why I said, thy dead men shall live with my dead body. You were dead while you were in trespasses and sins. This man died and became sin so you could be joined to his body and your grave could be open and you could be free from death. Go ahead. It said, for what esteem is it? If Peter, ye are buffeted for your fall. Peter 2 and 22. Because you bought about 17. Oh. And say, who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Who, when he was reviled, reviled him not again. Mm -hmm. When he suffered, he threatened not, mm -hmm. but committed himself to him that judges righteousness. Uh -huh. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. In his own body. On the tree. On the tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. See how you say you were dead to sin? So now he done open your grave so you can live. It's a twofold thing. While you were in sin, you were dead. Now once you die in him, now you're not dead. You're dead to sin so you can live. Therefore, your parts are restored and your hope is renewed. And therefore, you can live. You know what I'm saying? So you got to sit back and look at that. I know people suffer through type of that stuff all the time. So you got to remember how powerful your Elohim is because it's possible with him, but you got to lean on him. If you don't lean on him, then it's not possible. You know what I'm saying? But if you lean on him, he can heal and forgive who he is. He tell you that in the law. He had compassion on who he want to have compassion. He had mercy on who he want to have mercy on. You know what I'm saying? One of, as we already know, when you're dealing with a reprobate mind, one of the key components of it is, is that you continue to do what you want to do. Once, once this man word is no longer in your brain and it's not dictating where you want to go, then he lets you have the thoughts that you want to have to let you go in the way that he want, that you want to go. You know what I'm saying? One of the instances where you would know you may not have been moved to reprobate status is this man word is still in your brain and this is what you want to do. I'm talking about actually do it though. Not do it when it's convenient. You know what I'm saying? But actually do it. Finish that Mark chapter, or John 14, right? About 14 and 4. And then we come on with what we got to go to. It says, And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Master, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Mm -hmm. Yahushua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh -huh. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh -huh. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Uh -huh. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. And have seen him. Philip said unto him, Master, show us the Father, and it suffices us. It suffices us. 
Yahushua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet ye have not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Mm -hmm. The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the work. He does the work. Believe you see who said he was in it? So what Elohim is possible. His father was dwelling in him because the word was dwelling in him. And that what made it possible for him to do the things that he was doing. You know what I'm saying? If the word is in you, it is possible. But you have to lay it up in your heart and you got to believe it. And you have to allow it to dictate your actions. Go ahead. It said, believe me that I am in the father and mm -hmm. the father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That's good, man. And that's what come from if you if all things are possible in Allahim. It's just going to depend on where your level of faith is with him. And with that being said, what does he mean exactly by greater works? Because I hear people saying that all the time. You feel like they're going to be healing people and all that stuff. This is as plain as what he said. Ain't nothing extra to it. The reason why people don't do these things now is because they don't actually believe it. You know what I'm saying? And they're not actually living it. So it's going to be impossible for you to do it. You know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, like I say, those things were not for those who believe. They're for unbelievers. Like when he rose Lazarus from the dead, he stepped to the side and said, Father, I know you always hear me. He said, I'm not doing this for, for me. I'm doing this for those that's around me because I know they don't believe. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't that wasn't for the disciples. They were already down. You know what I'm saying? If y'all was to resurrect somebody from the dead right now, that ain't gonna benefit none of y'all if you say you believe. How's that gonna increase your faith? You already believe it. Do you know what I'm saying? If it's a whole bunch of people around who don't believe it, then yeah, that's gonna do something for them. I don't need to see anybody resurrect nobody from the dead to believe this man power real. I don't need to see that. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to see an impotent man be healed and all of a sudden my faith in Yah is strengthened. I don't need to see that. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to see devils cast out of nobody. I don't need to see any of that. I already believe the man on the strength of his word. So that's not going to do nothing. Somebody talking in tongues ain't going to do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Talk, and you know talking in tongues is just talking in another language. Not that stuff them niggas do on Sunday where they sound like they're having a seizure and a stroke at the same time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real, I don't know what them niggas be saying. The nigga just make stuff up on the go. You wouldn't even talk to your children like that. And they were babies with the stuff they be saying. But that's not for anybody who believes. That's what Paul broke that down in 1 Corinthians 13, 14, I should say. That is for people who don't believe. Prophecy is for those who believe. You know what I'm saying? So if you believe, you will be like, shoot, man, what that word talking about, though? Because I don't need to see none of that. If you believe in y'all, you don't need to see no 5,000. You got niggas who be like, oh, I, we need to do the archaeological research. So you need to see where they crossed the Red Sea to believe? He can't do nothing with you. So you need to see where these men's graves were at and all that type of stuff? He can't do nothing with you. See, faith is like, say, I need to know. You're right, you do need to know. And you're going to need to know why you burning in the hell, why he's looking at you too. Because it's not the issue of wanting to actually see these things. You want these things to make your faith better. I'm not knocking nobody who wants to actually go physically lay their eyes on it just for research sake to be like, boom, you know what I'm saying? No, nigga be like, oh, if I see where they cross the Red Sea, I believe then. But it's a lot of people that, that think that way. If I can see this artifact or this person's grave or this, then I can know they can exist. Niggas so dumb, it people who've been dead for centuries who existed and ain't no records of them. And you're right, for select individuals. It's a lot of people that lived in Egypt and that's dead. There ain't no records of them people. Ain't no graves of them people. I know I got some relatives somewhere that's dead. Ain't nobody know they were dead. And can't nobody prove that they existed. Somebody might want to mute their phone. You know what I'm saying? Check this out, right? If you to die right now, right, with no birth certificate, no social security card, and none of this stuff, nobody can prove that you existed. You can say, that's done it. That's Stanley if you got some photograph, but nobody can prove that that's really you. Do you know what I'm saying? And even then, without the kid, it came, what, what, what is records at to prove them your church? That's why the men got put out the priesthood. There was no records to prove they were priests. So I'm going to take your word for it. 
No, nah, bro, you can't, you can't come in here and perform that office. We don't have any proof. There's no proof that you are who you say you are. You know what I'm saying? So niggas don't use no common sense. You think they walk around here is the grave of David. So once you find these dead bones, then what you gonna do with them? See, that's it. How you know them David's bones? <laughs> Stupid nigga. Cause they put a marker there and say that David bones. So how you know? You gonna look at him? See, I can tell you. See that fever? See, that's how I know that was him. You know, good, good. Well, like this here, and that's in your leg. He kick a nigga there. You see how the leg extend? See, David extended because see, I seen him dance. I'm for real though. You can't even prove where's Moses' grave at. And if you find it, how you know that's Moses? Because there's a marker that said that Moses. We could go to my daddy's grave right now. You don't know if that's my daddy. Well, you might know. Now he ain't fully decomposed. But you know what I'm talking about? You ain't gonna know that's him though. He full of this ain't nothing but bones in there. You be like, shoot. You sure that's Anthony Roberts? They say it is. Well, that's who it is then. That's how dumb niggas is. Niggas don't even use no brain, no sense, no nothing. Niggas don't even think. Niggas don't even think. You can't prove that. You got niggas around here looking for the Ark of the Covenant. For what? What you gonna do with it when you find it? Open it up so you can die like them niggas in, in, in the land of the Philistines? You got niggas who go, they made a whole movie about looking for the Ark of the Covenant, man. Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark. They made whole, whole movies, about three of them. And it was all about looking for the record and the testimony that your God left to you. So you know they made a movie about it, you got people around here looking for it. And what you gonna do with it when you find it? I know the word real now. Either you believe it or you don't. But if you believe it, you put your trust and hope in it, then your hope is never lost. You know what I'm saying? Your hope can only be lost once you lose hope in your hood. If, 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 you, if you still got some slimmer hope in your hood, there's a chance. Once that hope in your hood gone, it's over. It's over. As long as you got a little bit of that, you got a chance. Now it's what you do with that little bit to take that little to a lot. That's why you say, you know what? I got the faith of a mustard seed because a mustard seed is a very small thing. But over a period of time that you plant it in the ground and you water it and you cultivate it, it grows into a very large tree. And that's how faith is. That seed of the word is planted in your heart and it's got to be watered and it's got to be cultivated. And over a period of time, it can grow to be massive. What do you think if somebody gives somebody a reservation, it's a possible chance they might believe? No, because the master said, sinner, he say, man, let me go to my brother's house so they won't come to this place. He said, man, they got Moses and the prophets. He said, if they won't believe Moses and the prophets, then they certainly won't go to get it for him, Luke 16, man. No, I understand what you're talking about, but the masters already said, if they won't believe the word, they're not going to believe. If 22 niggas did pop the pot in their grave and say, it's real, they ain't going to believe it. They ain't be like, shoot, boy. You know what a nigga going to do? Out of here, because I know I'm about to say, nigga go to popping out graves? Better I don't stand there and talk to this nigga. <laughs> Better don't stand there and talk to this nigga. No, sir. You know, when we were young, you used to sit back and think, but you going to cut through the graveyard? No, I will not. You know what I'm saying? The graveyard on beach where the white people buried that because see, it's two graveyards, it's on three. You know what I'm talking about? You got the one by Atlantic Gardens, that's where the niggas at. You know what I'm saying? And you got the one, uh, well, I came uh, across the street from all the office buildings, that's where the white people at. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can't remember the name, you know what I mean? But on the back side of it, when we on Emerson Way, like if we going to Harrow House, or you know what I'm saying, this, that, and the third, and we ain't want to walk all the way around to get back to Clearview or the gardens, you could cut through the cemetery. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas want to cut through the cemetery at nighttime. I'm not, but I'm not cutting through it. You know what I'm talking about? Because if stuff go to moving or making noises, I'm out of here. You know what I'm talking about? This nigga. You can say what you want to say, nigga. I'm 13, 14 years old, nigga. I don't know what's going on out here. We ain't supposed to be hearing no noises out here. <laughs> No noises, nigga. I go to here and stuff rumbling, niggas hollering in their Joe voice. I know who I'm walking with. Ain't nobody supposed to be out here. You know what I'm talking about? That's not you. Who is that talking? I bet I leave you there. You say you call me what you want to call me. Ain't no, ain't no zombies finna be grabbing on me, nigga. I'm not with that. I don't like dead bodies. I don't like to be around dead bodies. I'm straight. I'm straight. But what would you do? You walk through the cemetery at night, nonetheless, and five, six niggas pop out to me. You got some water. <laughs> What y'all doing walking through my house? I'm trying to sleep. Well, I'm gone. You sit back and look at it. If people resurrected after the master resurrected from the dead, that ain't make them niggas believe. 
Because it's certainly a whole bunch of people resurrected with him. It didn't make nobody. You think everybody in Jerusalem should have believed after that? Well, them boys walking the street. They walking the street, knocking on nigga doors. That's the one. Nigga, what you doing? Nigga, you died last week. What you doing here? Nigga about to sit back and look at it. That's your daddy at the door. That nigga dead. Bow. Nigga can't come in here. You know, you don't deal with no dead body. Nigga slam the door in your face. You know what I'm talking about? But she, they don't know what's going on. This nigga just got out of his grave clothes. What he doing around here? Nigga ain't dead if you want to look at the door. Sure, nigga was dead when I put him in the ground. I don't know why this nigga here. Nigga was stop knocking on my door. Come on, man. What are they? Luke 16? What version are they, man? I'm just saying, how would you feel dead nigga knock on your door? What about daddy knock on my door right now, boy? I'd be like, this here. Shoot, what? You locked up then. I thought you were scarred. I ain't gonna think about it. I mean, knowing what I know now, I'm be like, shoot, pop, boy, you all right, boy, y'all, you good. Well, I thought you was scarred. You know what I'm talking about? Clearly, you gonna be chilling. You know what I'm talking about? Clearly. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what happened, but boy, shoot, boy, I thought you were surely going there. Go ahead. Come on, I got you. Hold on, y'all. What's that? I got you. Go ahead. Tell him the verb, man. Yeah, um. 16 to 29. 16 to 29. Make it 27, though. It said, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. Mm -hmm. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He said, Send him through there. I got five brothers, man. What did the master say, though? Abraham said unto him, They have Moses <laughs> and the prophets. They have who? Moses and the prophets. They got who? Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear who? Let them hear He said, let them hear the book. It said, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. What did he say? And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded through one that rose from the dead. They ain't gonna be persuaded. They're not gonna be persuaded. That's why you see the master only appeared to people who believed on it before he died. He only appeared to people, give, give him Acts 10 and 38. He only appeared to people who, who believed on him. Make it 34. He only appeared to people who believed on him before he died. You don't see this man appear to nobody who didn't believe on him. Because it wasn't going to benefit him. It wasn't going to profit him. That's why he said, I heard of you with the ear. Now my eye has seen. If you believe the word, then you can see him and these things can be possible. But we ain't trying to do nothing but get your faith right. Everything else fall into place after that. We have no desire that anybody perish. Your Elohim don't got no desire that you perish, so why would I? That don't make no sense. See, I'm going to tell you something, right? A nigga, a nigga tell you, oh, that nigga want to see you go to hell. No, nigga, you want to see them go to hell. That's why you're telling nigga that. You know what I'm saying? Because you not, what did he say about the scribes, right? He said they not trying to get in, and they not trying to get you in. So a nigga, and they doing just what Basha did with Asa. They know Asa was trying to reform the people and get the people right. I don't want you to come holler at him. I'd rather you come holler at me because I ain't trying to do nothing. So I'm trying to keep you from doing something. Come on. Some strong chips you eating right there, man. Smell like feet. 34. Make it 33. No, I said 34. I said 38 and then I said 34. Mm. It said, then Peter opened his mouth and said, What did he say? Of a truth, I perceive that Elohim is no respect of a person. He no respect of a person. But in every nation, he that fears him and works in righteousness is accepted with him. Yes, sir. The word which Elohim sent unto the children of Yasharab, preaching, preaching shalom mm. by Yushua Mashiach. Yes, sir. He is master of all. Yes, sir. That word, I say he know, which was published throughout all Yehuda and began from Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How Elohim anointed Yahushua of Nazareth with the rule of Hakadesh with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes, sir. For Elohim was with him. Yes, sir. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Yahudim and in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. whom they slew and hang on the truth. Yes, sir. Him Elohim raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people. Not to all. Not to all the people, but to who? But to witnesses chosen before Elohim. Witnesses, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Only he only showed them the people who believed on him. <coughs> he only showed them the people who believed on him. He ain't showing to everybody for what? For what? That would be contradicting his own word if he say they ain't gonna believe even if one rose from the dead. He rose from the dead himself. Who did he appear to? That you can read. You can read that he appeared to who? Mary Magdalene. You can read that he appeared to the 11 
Even Thomas had an issue. Thomas said, boy, I ain't going to believe this. I stick my finger through her hand and it's hot. You know what I'm talking about? It took him to actually see him. Thomas, the only except he believed, but his belief was small. Do you know what I'm saying? Clay, my heart, man, he really resurrected from the dead, man. I don't know, man. I got to stick my hands in the hole, my nigga. When he seen it, he was astonished. So that's how we know. See, it's a lot of things. Remember, nigga got mad about this. And that's why I tell you, you can rap about the word and sing about the word all you want. I ain't going to say nobody so. That contradict the word. Do you know what I'm saying? They could give somebody some joy. It can make them make a joyful noise, things of that nature. It ain't going to give them the knowledge of Elohim. I don't care what you say. That man say they ain't going to believe unless they hear Moses and the prophets. And that's what it is. Nigga ain't going to believe off no rap record. Nigga ain't going to believe off no song. You got to be a fool if you believe that. How many, how many, how many spiritual songs, whether you was in the Christian church or in Hebrew, that you heard that made you believe the word? Not now. Do you know what I'm saying? Not now. They ain't sit back and look at you. Boy, I believe on y'all a little stronger after that song. You know what I'm saying? You like the song, might have got your spirit joyful. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? When you get when you look to get your spirit nourished, you ain't gonna put no song on. You crack the book open. You know what I'm saying? How many of you nigga, how many of you nigga faith got strengthened when you was in church watching the praise team dance? They around here running flags all in the air doing backflips. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody faith got strengthened off of that. You know what you did when you needed your strength? You, you ain't said let me pop in the tape of the praise dancers. You popped the book open. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It didn't say, I believe now that I've seen you dance or now that I've seen you sing. He said, I believe because I've heard and faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word. Nigga be trying to skirt the word because nigga don't really believe the word. That's why they try to put it in other places. Because the truth be told, you want to be a man and not Elohim. You want this thing to come to you so a nigga say, a nigga believed on y'all through my song. And y'all's out the equation on that. And they feel like y'all in the equation because you mentioned his name. But he's not in that equation because he didn't ordain that. You chose to go make that song. You know how I many wicked niggas make spiritual songs? You know what I'm talking about? Look at all them Christian niggas. All them niggas wicked. Shoot. Probably 75% of the Hebrew niggas who make songs wicked. And niggas buy it right on to them. Nigga know that nigga wicked, but that song tight though. Well, I find out a nigga wicked boy the desire to listen to their music just, just drops off exponentially. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to hear this. Do you know what I'm talking about? That just yeah. huh? Nigga the word? Yeah. Shoot, that's why I don't listen to a lot of niggas now. Cause I be man, what it? What your man there? Jew boy the great. We know that nigga wicked. You think I'm finna listen to this nigga songs? I ain't finna listen to none of these niggas songs, man. Just based off this nigga's conversation of what he about. I'm gonna listen to this song for, man. Nigga, you wicked. Yeah, you did. He hadn't manifested nothing that the other than unbelief. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. First King 22, man. Let's get it in. Verse 51. It's time to look at old Isaiah. I didn't have to drop that on y'all, man. I needed 45 minutes of your time on that, man, you know. Every now and then, you just got to remember that, that, you know. Don't lose your hope. Once you lose that, you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got a mind to serve y'all and you still got breath in your lungs, you got a chance. You know what I'm saying? The only way you ain't got a chance is if that you have a pleasure of unrighteousness, then he will give you a strong delusion that you should believe a lot, that you should continue in unrighteousness. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing. If you have a pleasure in doing what's wrong, then your hope is lost. If you don't have a pleasure in doing what's wrong, then there's still a chance. First Kings 22 and 51. Just always remember that. He said the dead that was slain, they should live. So if you sacrifice yourself, you can live. Ahaziah son of Ahab began to reign over Yashariah and Samaria in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Yehudah, mm -hmm. and reigned two years over Yashariah. He did evil in the sight of Yehudah and walked in the ways of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Yerboam son of Nebat, who made Yashariah to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked the anger of Yehudah, God of of Yasharal according to all that his father said. Second Kings chapter one. So we're gonna sit back and look at O Azazai with his wicked self. It said then Moab rebelled against Yasharal after the death of Ahab, and Azaiah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. 
and he sent messages and said unto him, Go inquire Balzabug, the Alahim of Ekron. Uh huh, go inquire who? Of Balzabug. Now look what he goes to do. Go inquire who? Balzabug. Beetlejuice. He want to go holler at Beetlejuice. Go ahead. Of the Alahim of Ekron. Mm -hmm. Whether I shall recover of the disease. Whether I shall recover of the disease. But the Malachim of Yahuwah said unto Elijah the Tishbite. What he said to him? Arise up and meet the messenger of the king of Samaria and say unto him, Is it not because there is not an Alahim of Yasharai that you go inquire of Baal the Alahim of Ekron? Mm -hmm. Now therefore thus says Yahuwah. Thou shalt not come down from the bed which thou art going up, but thou shalt surely die. You will surely die. And Elijah departed. And he departed. And when the messenger turned back to him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man to meet us and said unto us, Go turn again to the to the mallet that sent you, and say unto him, Thus said Jehovah, Is it not because there is not an Elohim in Yasharal? That thou sendest to inquire bows above, thou the heme of Ekron. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed which thou art going up, but thou shalt surely die. Now you know what now what you know how wicked that is? See, of course he hasn't he's not serving y'all, so he's seeking to get healing and hope from another power. So there's nothing that Isaiah could do that could ever please y'all. Now of course y'all know the story go down, Elijah start dropping niggas off with some good old fire from Shamahim. You know what I'm saying? For size him and trying him. But drop down here to about verse 16, I suppose. I think we had already started this here, though. Make it verse 15. I was going to say, you think he already knew him. We could have said he was wicked already, but yeah. I feel like y'all put him in that position for him to turn to y'all. and y'all. No, that's Ahab's son. He was called from the start. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He was scarred from the start. You want to know why he was scarred from the start? The book say train up a child in the way that he should go, and he will not depart. He was trained. He was trained in the ways of wickedness from the time he was born. Cause Ahab is his daddy, mm -hmm. and who is his mammy then? Well, Jeze Jeze Jezebel. Jezebel. So he was already scarred. You know what I'm saying? And this takes us back to what's written in the Book of Job. You know what it say about wicked children? They made for the sword. They made for the sword. You know what I'm saying? You gotta remember. Look at well, a lot of these kings. Look at and see who their parents are. So there's two as his eyes in the word. This one here, you got this one here over Yasharal, you got another one over Yehuda. You know what I'm talking about? This one here is over Yasharal. This Ahab's son. This Ahab's son. Matter of fact, this is Ahab's son that took over from him at the time of his death. This is a wicked nigga. You know what I'm saying? Verse 15. It says, in the Malachim of Yehuda came to Elijah. Go down, said to Elijah, go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him into the mallet. And he said unto him, Thus said Jehovah, for as much as thou hast sent messages to inquire about the above, the God of Ekron, is it not because there is no Elohim in Yasharal mm -hmm. to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed without going up, thou shalt surely die. You're going to die. So he died according to the word that Jehovah spoke to Elijah and Jehovah. Reign in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Yehuda, because he had no son. Now the rest of his acts of Isaiah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Yahshua? Now let's come back to Second Chronicles 17, because you notice that it said that Isaiah overlapped with Jehoshaphat. So we got to come over here and look at where they go to a little bit more detail with Azaziah and Jehoshaphat and what they overlapping. We read a little bit about Jehoshaphat. Last night, but let's see where we want to pick him up at. Hold on, go on here to 19. Let's do 19. Matter of fact, now let's do 18 first. Let's do 18 and 20 because chapter uh, 18 and 28. Because chapter 18 really deals more story the story in First Kings 22 that we all know. What happened in First? You remember that, and, you, and remember First Kings 22 and this Second Chronicles 18, and it's in King Second Kings too. It's, it's told like three times. Uh, the key point of what you see where Ahab was is he wanted to do wrong and he let him believe what he wanted to believe. Because he wanted to go take Ramoth Gilead because he said it's ours. The whole time, y'all didn't want you to take your butt up there to fool with it. You know what I'm saying? He said, we're going to take it anyway. He said, you know what? And I'm going to let you go take it then. 
Now, one thing you know what's consistent with Jehoshaphat is Jehoshaphat also said it in another place. He would always ask, is there another prophet here, y'all, that we might inquire of? Now, why you know why Jehoshaphat go ask that? Because he know these niggas wicked. But at the same token, if you know they wicked, why you fooling with them? Go ahead. 1828. It says, so the Malachi Yasharal and Jehoshaphat, Malachi of Yehuda went up to Ramah Gilead mm -hmm. and the king of Yasharah said unto Jehoshaphat I will disguise myself and I will go to the battle but put thou on put thou on thy robe so that the Malik of Yasharah is disguised and they went to battle now the king of Syria had that's what the master did he disguised himself how did the master disguise himself to go to battle how did he disguise himself to go to battle no, I say disguise. He say, put, listen what he told him to do, right? But put on thy robes so the king of Yasharal disguised himself. So, yeah, to a certain extent. How did he, but what is that form of a servant that he put on then? Go and give him Hebrews 2 and 14. Now, you know what the battle is when you talk about what the army is. The battle is to fight against things that are <laughs> spiritual and not natural. But how did he go about to this? And that's what you're looking at when you come in to deal with the words you disguising yourself in battle. Huh? Two and fourteen. Hebrews two and fourteen. It says, "For as much <coughs> then as children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, mm -hmm. that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the adversary. Pause. Now go get John 1 and 1 and you can see how the king of Yasharal disguised himself to go into battle. Because if you disguise, they don't know who you are. What is the many things they asked this man? Are you the Mashiach? Are you the prophet? But he was in battle at that time. Disguised. And what happened to him while he was disguised with going into battle? He died, just like Ahab died. Go ahead, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended not. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was John. Mm -hmm. The same came as witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own. Oh. And the call he came into his own and what? His own received him not. They came to him, he was disguised. They didn't know who he was. You think they would have rejected their king? You think they would have rejected their savior? There's another place for that. Come over here to uh give me second Kings thirteen, man. Thirteen and one score. I wasn't gonna do it right now, but score. Second Kings thirteen, man. It say in the three and twentieth year, if Yoash the king of Ahaziah, the son of Ahaziah, king of Yehuda, and we're gonna come back to uh to this dude. So Yo we, we just want I just want to look at one thing. Go ahead. Yehoash the son of Yehu began to reign over Yashariah and Samaria and reigned seventeen years. Mm -hmm. and he did that with evil in the sight of Yehuda and followed the sins of Yehu, born son of the back, which made Yashariah to sin. And he you, departed not. You know, you know Jeroboam got to be one wicked dude because his name come up repeatedly. Go ahead. It said, And the anger of Yehud was kindled against Yasharal, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, the king of Syria, unto the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. Yep. And Jehoaz besought. He did what? He besought Yehud. Now, is Jehoaz wicked or is he righteous? No, he wicked. You just read it. He wicked. No, I mean, you should have said it right there. He did that which was evil. He followed after your born son, Nebat. He got golden cans of idols going on. But he said he besought y'all. And what did y'all do? Go ahead. They say, 
and he hearkened unto him. Why did he hearken? For he saw the oppression of Yasharab because of the king of Assyria. So he didn't hold that against the people because this nigga was wicked. He was seeing what the Syrians were doing to his people. What happened after that? It said, and who gave Yasharab a savior? He gave him what? A savior. He gave him somebody to deliver him from it. But what did they do? Go ahead. It says, nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of your your born who made Yashara the sin. You skipped that whole verse, sir. Come on, bro. Oh, he gave him a savior so that they went out from under the hand of Syria and the children of Yashara dwelt in their tents as before time. What you think he mean when he said they dwelt in their tents as before time? When he tell him he's dwelt in their tents as before time, he telling you that he set them as what it was in the beginning. They were at peace. They were at rest. They had no trouble from their adversaries. You know what I'm saying? I'm leading to something else. Read the next verse though. And nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Yahshua the sin, but walked therein, and there remained the grove also in Samaria. So after he saved them, they still kept worshiping idol gods after that. Give me Second Peter chapter 2, man, verse 20. You know what that is? Y'all can come through and deliver you from a situation. These niggas are sinning. He didn't have to hearken. He hearkened because, again, this is a manifestation of the love of Elohim. Because you did wrong. You know what I'm saying? You cried unto him. He saw your oppression. And he decided to deliver you. He gave you a savior to save you. Set you back as you was before time. And you continued in your sin. Now let's look at what he said in 2 Peter. Make it verse 17. 2, Two and 17. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 17. It said, These are the wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, who that were clean escape from them who live in error. Mm-hmm. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of, of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of a master and savior, Yahushua Mashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse than them than the beginning. You know what was worse ended up being in the beginning for Yashara? They, they ended up getting snatched out the land behind that. They ended up getting snatched out the land behind them. Because they got delivered. It was worse for them. And it ended up being worse for them in the beginning than it was when it started. You know what I'm saying? You got to pay attention to that type of stuff. You got to pay attention to that. It was worse for them than when they started. He gave them a savior, right? And what they did with that savior? They said, screw him. And they went right back to doing what they were already doing. They went right back to walking in their sins. They went right back to wickedness. And that's why we have to pay attention that we don't make that mistake. Because he done said Yahoo shot. He is the Savior. Go and give him Acts 5 and 28. Yeah, I got you that. Go and give me Acts 5 and 28. Move your phone to that. You got an echo. Saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, he said, Come on. Yeah. It said, Behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring us, bring this man's blood upon us. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Allahim rather than men. Mm -hmm. Now Allahim of our fathers raised up Yahushua whom he slew and hang on a tree. Mm -hmm. Him have Allahim exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For what? For to give repentance to Yahshua and forgiveness of sin. Go ahead. And we are his witnesses of those things. And so is also the Ruach HaKadosh whom Allahim have given to them that obey him. Now you got to think about it and look at that. He said he's for the forgiveness of sins. He raised them up a savior. He is an example of what you see in 2 Kings 13 because he's hearkening unto this cry even though the people are wicked. Then you have to look at Hamashiach was considered to be sin while he was on the stake and he cried out for the saving of the people even though the people were wicked and he hearkened unto that cry because he seen the oppression. Hold on, go back to that Hebrews 2 and 15, man. Look at what he told you. That's why he say he that commits sin is of the servant of sin. You being oppressed and you in bondage because of the Syrian, because of what they doing to you. 
but it was your own transgressions that brought the Syrian on you in the first place. You know what I'm talking about? So he sent somebody to deliver you from the Syrian, and when you got delivered from the Syrian, you went right back to worshiping idol gods or right back to your own desires and lust. And we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Not if you expected mercy and that come in at your faith really wasn't that strong. You was just looking for him to deliver you from a situation till you could get what you wanted. And then once you got what you wanted, you went right back to doing what you wanted to do. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's why it ended up being worse for them at the last. Because then four chapters later in that kings, the kingdom of Yasharal got snatched up out of the land and never returned. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, we were talking about this last night, right? And I listened to a little bit of that when I arrived home. You know, they were talking about they had a little round table, the African Hebrew Israelite controversy. How these, you know, you know, you got Africans over there in Africa that say they Israelites, they didn't always had that, they never stopped living. And this is what popped in my head, right? You know what popped in my head? Was well, Second Kings chapter 17 popped in my head, and John chapter 4 popped in my head. Because that Samaritan woman, you couldn't tell her that Jacob wasn't her daddy. You couldn't tell her that she wasn't of the seed of Jacob. Yet you were not of the seed of Jacob. Nigga don't care how much uh, uh, of the information you had or the customs you kept. You keeping that doesn't mean you're of that stock. That's what I want to think of. And I ain't saying that there ain't no Hebrews over there in Africa or, not, or any of those people lying. But just because you keep these customs and you never forgot, that don't really mean nothing to me because he placed people of your stock in the land and they continued as if they were the people. You know what I'm saying? And guess what we get swayed by now? See, they never forgot they Israel. Well, how we don't know they was them niggas in Samaria? Because if I know, if you know the word, you know it said King 17. They put people in the land and they were taught the ways of Yahuwah, which led that Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 say, Our father Jacob. But Jacob ain't your daddy. Period. He's not your father. But guess what? If we if if, if we would have been in that days and times, we'd have thought like, well, she is like, boy, she say Jacob her daddy. She know all the custom. They've been keeping the laws whole time. She ain't no brute, not by blood anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't never think about that. Do you know what I'm saying? I ain't never think about it till last night because I ain't really gave much credence to none of them people over there. You be honest with you. No disrespect or no beef or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I just really wasn't thinking about them like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's how we look at it. They got the oral traditions. They never stopped doing it. Well, how they never stopped doing it, but all the rest of us stopped doing it? That would be kind of contrary to the word then. Because the way they were talking about is Hebrews sold other Hebrews. Now, I can't go on the word and say, well, Hebrews put other Hebrews in hard bondage, but never will they sold them to another people. You know what I'm saying? You can read that in Nehemiah. I ain't never read nowhere where no Bruce sold the people to another people. That book say other people sold us. And I ain't talking about Deuteronomy. I'm talking about Joel. He said, other people sold us. You know what I'm saying? No way in that. Because guaranteed, boy, if I know y'all like I know y'all, he would tell us that we would sell each other. Yeah, he showed you taking slaves for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Not slaves for other people, but slaves for yourself. I'm going to make, make Johnny work for me. Johnny going to be my slave. You know what I'm saying? Never selling them to another people. We don't. Re I can't read. And then it's a film of fact. Uh, he would have told us that part. Did you know what the dude tried to say? I can show you in the book where he said they sold the poor for a pair of shoes. Uh, yeah, a pair of shoes, not to another people, sir. Well, they new Canaanites, boy. New Canaanites. <laughs> <laughs> Old nigga. You want a camera nigga? Come on, man. Back to Second Chronicle 18. I said that nigga for them boy, them joints. Yeah, them 13. Oh, boy, that nigga got them Space Jam. Why well, give you two of them niggas for that? <laughs> for real, though. Well, you know, some of these, boy, some of these niggas are selling nigga for a Michael Kohl watch and a Gucci belt. You know what I'm talking about? Shoot, as bad as these niggas on drugs, these niggas might sell a nigga for a prescription of Percocet and Xanax. That's what they said at Grandma. <laughs> grandma, out of here. You can get her. She don't need the pill no way. She ain't got but three more months to live. That messed up, though. All jokes aside, though, boy, niggas, cause these niggas, I mean, let's just be real with it. Niggas selling niggas out for a Newport at the police station. You think a nigga ain't gonna sell a nigga out for an outfit? Niggas selling niggas out. I heard a nigga, Miff Bleak, mention this here, right? He just gave a different perspective of what that nigga meant on the rhyme, though. Cause he combined it with another saying when Jay was like, niggas got money to their ear. But you got niggas who put money to their ear every day. You know how niggas put money to their ear every day? Nigga calling Crime Stoppers. Nigga calling Crime Stoppers. Well, I know where that nigga at, boy. Let me get that stipe. Well, I ain't calling Crime Stoppers, boy. You know what I'm saying? I can't do their job for them. 
I don't even want that thousand dollars. I can't live with the shame. I told you boy the other day, boy, I pulled up on a nigga got murked, boy, that's out there. Like, dang, nigga walked right up on him and killed him while he was sitting in his car. I knew that. Yeah, that was a girl I went to school with, that was her cousin. Like shit, I probably came like 30 minutes after. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dang. The only reason like this up, well, I mean, I seen how it wrote off, I already know it was a murder. You know what I'm saying? Then they had everybody standing out there, but that joint just show you. Well, you could be out of here, right? You know what I'm saying? And that nigga probably killed little bro over nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely nothing. You know what I'm talking about? But nigga called Crime Stopper right on up on that man talking about they gang. We talking about regular people. We talking about niggas say they gangsters now. I know niggas who say they done bought work for calling Crime Stoppers on niggas. <laughs> Got that bread. Niggas say, boy, I get a stack. They give you a stack now. So you can remain anonymous. Nigga like this here. I think Stanley shot that nigga. How do you anonymous for this thing? I don't know how that works because I ain't never come up with no anonymous nigga. I guess they drop the check wherever they drop it at. I don't know how they pay that. Oh, ain't crazy. You're not no anonymous check. You got to sign the dotted line for that money. I don't know how that junk works, man. You know what I'm saying? Heck no. Nigga call the crime stoppers on the nigga. They got, a, they got a number. I don't know if it's still in the phone book, right? But I seen it when, when I was younger, right? When I was hustling, right? Nigga just looking in the phone book because I was bored. They got a number. That junk was called 630 Crack. You know what I'm saying? Like if a nigga was selling work in the neighborhood, you could call that number to report that they were selling drugs. You ain't gonna get paid. I don't know. Stoppers, if they put a reward out there, you gotta put your name down. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Huh? Nah, I didn't say that. I'm just saying. If you want to get that money, you want to get that money. You're not anonymous. You don't got how many y'all gonna stand? Niggas see that in the in the, in the paper if you if you snitch, even if you hit stand or not. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be in that paperwork. It's gonna be in that paperwork, bro. That's not hit. Because you gotta come do your position. You said in the paper. In your paperwork. In your paperwork. If you, if you they have to go to court and you told, yeah, you hit the stand. But if you sign for that crime stop with money, got a check, they can see who told. Period. That crime stop stuff ain't gonna make it way to your paperwork, but because you gotta go to depositions and you gotta give a a, a report to the police. That get in your paperwork. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga going, if a nigga, because depositions is your testimony before you go to trial. So if a nigga tell on you, he got to come to the state attorney's office and he got to give a deposition. And his testimony can't deviate from what he had in his deposition or it's going to knock his credibility down in trial. You know what I'm saying? Because when I caught mine back in 02, the nigga who, who, uh, who set a nigga up, he didn't come to depositions, which made their whole case like weak as wet toilet tissue. Cause they can't do Cause the police ain't see nothing I ain't serve the police You know what I'm talking about They ain't see nothing They ain't had no video They had no audio They had All they had was him You know what I'm saying So they can't come in there and say He sold dope to this guy Because you didn't see me sell anything You know what I'm saying That's why they like to use the police To set people up Because people tend to believe the police More Than they believe a regular person Yeah that's and it says that they, they got greater credibility. It's the same token. Now that I just think about it, it popped in my head. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's why people look at celebrities and they be tripping. That's why nigga like, oh, how can Usher have herpes? Because he's a nasty nigga. <laughs> he was killing this. He killed this cell. I ain't seen him. No, I'm like, say he killed this. I mean, I seen a lot of me inclining on. They've been killing him too. But he killed this self though. Yeah, him and Maddie Johnson talking so much positivity. You know, you got all that, and I mean, like I said, but at the same token, he talk, nigga didn't claim to be anything. It's just the fact that a nigga shot, he had herpes, and he was passing it around. I just seen this morning somebody else suing him, talking about I had sex with him. I ain't got no herpes, but if I knew he would have had herpes, I wouldn't have laid with him. But you only laid with him because he was usher. You know what I'm talking about? If he would have just been a, huh? Oh no, but you get herpes, you start, you scar, you got that for life. You got that for life. Yeah, you got that for life. I don't even know a herpes burn. That judge just got bumps. Everybody got herpes though. Cause that's what a cold sore is. You know what I'm talking about? But then you got herpes simplex B or simplex two. And that's what he got. No, everybody got herpes. <laughs> you get a cold sore, nigga, that is a herpes. Yeah, I ain't never herpes. I ain't never herpes. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's this different type it's simplex one and it's simplex two. Everybody naturally has herpes in their body. Like yeah, but Simplex 2, that's a, you caught him. You went deep. You know what I'm talking about? And you, and you caught that on the fly, 15-yard uh, button rod, nigga. 
what I'm talking about? You got some people that get it on their genitals, and then you got some people that get it on their mouth. I seen a nigga who had herpes in the mouth. That's not cool. What? Horrible. You know what I'm saying? But you don't have it in the mouth. No, no, I ain't talking about no cold sore. He had herpes, herpes oh. in the mouth. Well, sure. I ain't had nothing in the mouth. I ain't never had no cold sore. Yeah, some people had cold. That's what that's what Blistex is for, is to get rid of cold sores. Mm-hmm. It's just like everybody got bacteria in their body and all type of organisms crawling on your skin. That you can't see, but they there though. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you say everybody got a parasite, nigga. Say you got parasites, nigga. But everybody in your stomach, you got all type of stuff. That's why they tell you to get that bacteria out your stomach and drink that certain stuff. That stuff you say was nasty. Yeah, but regulate it so you can poop better. Do you know what I'm talking about? And then what are they? They going all because and we I mentioned this here because black people are the only people. White people love their celebrities too, but black people take it too far. We just can't believe when they do crazy stuff. They say, how can Kevin Hart cheat on his wife? Because he's a sinner. That's how. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas cheat on their wife every day. He's kept in the heart is a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I seen niggas get mad because OJ got out of prison. And he ain't even out yet. That nigga still got to do another three months. That nigga ain't even out yet. That nigga got to do another. How you get? Let me say, how you get paroled and you still got to do another 90 days? That nigga Stephen A. Smith said that nigga ought to stay in prison for life. And he said he's a double murderer. No, he's not. You might believe he killed somebody. That man is not a double murderer. That man was not convicted of killing anyone. <laughs> a lot of niggas did. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, yeah, he said that nigga ought to stay in prison. He should be in prison for the rest of his life. Nigga say OJ got $600,000 waiting on him when he get out of prison. Hey, what on Netflix here? That nigga gonna get a coin from that. That will go straight to the victim. You can't. There's a lot of law. There's a lot of laws. You can't profit off your crime. You can't do that. Oh no. He was not convicted. That's not a crime. Yeah, you know I mean, talking about period. You can't. You can, The family gonna get that cash. That nigga got a civil suit against him. No, he got an NFL pension. You can't. When you get sued, it can't touch your pension. <coughs> they can't keep touch. Coming. Keep, coming. keep on coming. Them check will just add up for him. Like, like the hear coming out strong, nigga, and you lose, nigga. I got a man on you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Let me get back on top of it, though. Uh, St. Cross of 1828. He probably got a lot of the lifetime yeah, stuff yeah. he had going. He ain't want no dumb nigga. He definitely ain't no dumb nigga. Real so bad, nigga. They said they destroyed OJ House just so you know he ain't live around them. They destroyed it. Them niggas hate OJ. They think black people like OJ. We don't care nothing about OJ. You know what I'm saying? It was just. It ain't about Johnny. It's just the fact that a nigga beat the system. You got the same crooked system that you've been killing us with that he beat it. That's all it really was about. Nigga ain't care nothing about OJ. You know what I'm saying? OJ, OJ is representative of the angst of black people in America. That's all it was. <laughs> hey, you ain't lying. This all the war. I know that because that's what Chris Rock, Chris Rock said. Where my OJ prize at? Nigga dancing in the street. Nigga, we ain't getting nothing. They still murder niggas. <laughs> I've been told you I feel about that. That boy ain't no way in the world. Boy, I remember I was out east and it was about 14, 15 niggas on the block. And that pulled it that one cracker rolled through. Them niggas were gone. I'm sitting there like, what? But a nigga came through and hit the block too many times. He gunning his car. Nigga said, boy, that nigga swerved to the block one more time, boy. I'm going to shoot this nigga car. Oh, why you ain't shoot up at the Charlie then? I ain't never understand that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, boy, I'm talking about one thing I ain't never did, boy. I ain't never ran for the police, boy. I'm not running. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that clicked in my head was slavery times. I'm running from that. I'm not running. You know what I'm saying? For real. I'm talking about when I was young, that's the only thing. So I'm not running from this crime. I would not give him the satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? Chasing me like it's 19, 18, 63. We're going to get him and round him up, son. Tie him up and beat us a nigga. Now that I said the cat, I'm not running. I'm not running, bro. Nigga who run and get away don't feel like that. I know they don't. <laughs> he feel like he's just making it in his face. Yeah, yeah. Because I just did my crime, ran from you, and got away. And you sweat tired with no, no cat. Man, they used to call my homeboy's phone. We gonna get you. We gonna cause they could never catch him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't calling him. I ain't even hit him. Bah, bah, bah. I ain't running though. Call it pride. Call it whatever you want. I used to feel like effing cracking, man. I'm not running. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing right here. Whatever. Yeah, I got work on me. I ain't got no work on me. I'm not running though. 
You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't like me, boy. I'm looking to fake cuss you out. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever. I just learned a little bit of tact as I got older. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff that I be on. I just ain't reveal it all, man. I'm not on that. I am not on that. I ain't no killing no gangster. I told you when I was on the road, boy, we could kill one of these CEOs, nigga. You ain't saying nothing. I don't want to fight none of you niggas. Fight you for what? We all got blue on. Bust this crack upside the head with this brown on. That who you fight? Crack right here showing you a bottle of niggas gold teeth, and you want to hit this nigga over here because he 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 owe you something, nigga. Bust that crack in his mouth. Like them quicker really come through ball and talk about look at all the gold teeth we done knocked out niggas mouth. You know what I'm saying? They show you the type of stuff. They clown about it. They clown about killing niggas. You know what I'm saying? And you want to stab this nigga over here by the pump? Nigga stab this crack over here. I done seen nigga get hit by the pump. You done walked up and stabbed a nigga by the man. I'm not stabbing no nigga about no man. You know what I'm saying? At least not in that scenario. You know what I'm talking about? You can stab a nigga over your home boy. They stab you over no man though. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm dead serious though, bro. There's three things get you killed in the penitentiary, man. Money, gambling, and homosexuals. And the basketball court. Make it full. <laughs> huh? The basketball court? Oh, trust me, I know. I know. I see a nigga drop dead on his dome. I told y'all about that before. Dead on his dome. He ain't breaking neck, shoot. I thought he broke a neck. We was out there playing. That nigga fouled Cub. That big old nigga said, nigga, foul me again, nigga. Nigga fouled him again. It was a skinny nigga from Jacksonville. That nigga turned around on that nigga. Pop, 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 pop. Worked him. Well, when him see okay, that nigga turned his head. Well, that nigga picked that skinny nigga up and did him just like this here. Pop. I said, oh my God. What he cracker got me at? Man, this nigga dropped this nigga dead on his neck. You know what I'm talking about? My homeboy run over there and slapped him. That nigga said, wake up, boy. Wake up. That nigga sleep. Messing with that basketball coat, boy. <laughs> but he, I'm talking about he dropped him on the crown of his head, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, that basketball coat gets you in trouble now, boy. I done seen niggas get in a lot of fights. You know what I'm talking about? I did four and a half years, and the closest I came to getting an altercation was behind that basketball coat. Because one, this is how one thing, this is how I get you in trouble on the basketball coat, then we're going to get back to what we're talking about. Number one, don't let it be no fine CEOs on, on the compound. You know what I'm saying? And they outside while niggas at wreck. And you saucer niggas. You know what I'm talking about? Because it ain't too many women as it is. So a nigga don't want to get embarrassed by no woman. This junk ain't no different on the street. Because you can't be crossing niggas up and doing niggas and, and the chicks at the park, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because a nigga feel like he embarrassed in front of these women. He gonna want to fight. You know what I'm saying? It's a pride thing. It's a competition thing. It's a male ego thing. It's really no different on the street. Nigga get bust up and murked out here on these street playing basketball too. You know what I'm saying? You been across a nigga up. Don't be a nigga who like to talk. You know what I'm talking about? You know, cross a nigga up, dropping buckets on him, better get somebody on me. This nigga ain't good enough. Nigga, nigga get mad. Man, niggas be busting bottles on the court. Nigga be mad. Oh, don't let it be going to 12 and it's 11, 10. You niggas who play ball know exactly what I'm talking about. They gonna have to catch an L ball. <laughs> nah, cause they like to see all type of bull rickle calls. Niggas getting mad about that. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff go to happen. And they got leagues in prison. You know what I'm saying? Like real leagues, nigga. Like they keep up with niggas' points. You know what I'm saying? Records. They give niggas little stuff for it and everything. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I was in several. Yeah. Because you ain't got nothing to do. Like, what else you gonna do? I was in several of them. What else you gonna do? Nigga be like, bro, come play with us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Who? Well, I was when I was younger, I could do my thing. I'm old now. I was younger then, I could move. Oh, that was 23, 24, and, and I, what? And I was about 40, 50 pounds lighter. Well, I'm talking about when I started working out, my game wasn't never the same. I didn't know how to play with all the extra muscle mass. You know, I would've been a little skinny nigga, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, boy, that core gets you in trouble, bro. Niggas pride, man. That pride and ego is something else. You know what I'm saying? And see, women, see, women just be mad. Oh, she thinks she cute, and that's why they don't like her. You know what I'm saying? They, they just be jealous. Niggas' pride and ego get in the way. That's what I tell you. Like, niggas be hating too, man. Niggas be hating, but it really be their pride because niggas want to be the man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want to be the man. Niggas want to be that dude. That's why a lot of dudes don't do bit. That's why I told y'all before, man. That's why, like what Dan Dash was talking about. That's why he said, I'd rather deal with a woman. You know what I'm saying? Because a woman want to see you win. A nigga got to really be down with you. Because a lot of times a nigga don't want to see you win. He want to be in your spot. 
You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, a woman's not competing with a man to take his spot. She trying to accentuate him so he can be better because he gonna turn around and do the same thing for her. You know what I'm saying? You put your homeboy on, he gonna feel like you owe him. And when you don't give him what he feel like he owed, he won't take you down. You know what I'm saying? You don't really, you rarely ever hear women, because there's a lot of gangster women in these streets. You rarely ever hear them switching out on their homegirls and killing them. You know what I'm saying? Niggas will switch out on their homeboy in a heartbeat. Pull a Judas on you. In a heartbeat. And it's all because I want to. The scribes and the Pharisees' whole point, they were jealous and envious of the master, but at the end of the day, it was their ego. They wanted to be in his position. You can't come around here. What's the thing they said? We're going to lose our place and nation. That's all they were looking at was their position. It was their ego. They didn't even sit back and look at everything he's saying, right? He, he coming to here. We could do more together than we can apart. They didn't look at none of that. It was their ego. You know what I'm saying? That would get dudes in trouble. And that's what happens on that basketball court. It'd be that ego. But you can't cross a nigga up and a nigga break his ankle. He fall down on the ground. A nigga's like, ooh. That nigga finna foul that nigga on the way back down. Oh, don't duck on a nigga. Next time you try to nigga, try to flip your nail. You know what I'm saying? For real though. Come on, man. Same ground. 18 to 8. Oh, yeah. Don't finish that. Hebrews 2 and 15. Uh, yep, well, 17 cool. It says, Wherefore, in all things it behooves him to be made unto his brother, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to Allahim, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. No, I need 15. It said, Deliver them who through fear and death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of Malachim, but took on the seed of Abraham. See what he did right here say he delivered them from bondage or oppression. See, he delivered the people from oppression in 2 Kings 13, didn't he? They went right back. Now, go and get John 8 and 30 school. It says that he spoke these words, and many believed on him. Then said you listen to the Yahudim which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, that long as that faith there, that faith will free you. Go ahead. They answered him, We be of Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How say thou ye will be made free? It's funny because Joe Joe has believed on Yah when he was in trouble. When the trouble left, they ain't believe him no more. We don't want to follow that pattern. Of, that's why he said that in Romans 15, the things written the fourth time were written for our learning. We need to learn from what these people did. You know what I'm saying? It's not just, oh, let's go through it and look at this. And, you know what I'm saying? Learn from what they did so you don't do it. If you learn from what they did, you know what can happen? You can identify those negative or positive traits in the people that are around you who claim to be in the Word. You know, that's old Joe has, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's an old Jehu nigga. That's a Jehoshaphat nigga. You're going to be able to tell. You can identify the attribute. He moved like Elijah moved. He think like this person, which all in all, you think like Mashiach, depending if they're righteous or not. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention. Because there'd be niggas you know who in the word that have exhibited attributes, whether positive or negative, of people in this book, and you just ignore them. That's why not just on the negative, but positive too. You know what I'm saying? And you ignored it. Because you weren't actually paying attention to what the people were doing. You were more caught up knowing who these people were to regurgitate some history. Versus looking at, I don't want to be like Joe has did. Joe had got him. Joe had around here serving idols, got in trouble, cried to Yah, and the people went right back to serving idols. Which means you never trusted in Yah, nor hoped in his salvation, nor decided to walk in his word. You just wanted his benefits. Go ahead. And that's the end of that. Go ahead. It's who's your answer that said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. That's why they were servants to this king of Syria. That's why they were oppressed. And then he sent him a savior. And what did that savior do? He set them free. Go ahead. It says that the servant abide not in the house forever, but the son abide forever. Mm-hmm. If the son therefore And you know what? 
free. This, and you shall be free indeed. And guess what happened with Yasharal? They didn't abide forever because they didn't allow him to remain to keep them free because they went back to their sins. Come on back to the first, second Chronicles 8. All the main focus is that don't go back and forth. If you're going to sin, be a sinner. If you're going to be righteous, be righteous. Yasharal like to play between the lines. Get who the two? We like to play games with it. This ain't the hokey pokey, man. You know what I'm saying? Got to be all in, all out. Go ahead, man. It said Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. He had what? He had riches and honor in abundance. You're in Second Chronicles 18. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. We need to be in 28. Now we read verse one. You want to know he had riches in abundance mm -hmm. and still went a fool with a sinner. Yeah, that's what he did. Make it, you know. Yeah, it's going for him. It says, And the king of Yashara said unto Yehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and I will go to the battle and put thou on robe. So the king of Yashara disguised himself and mm -hmm. they went to battle. Go ahead. Now the king of Assyria had commanded the captains. Of the chariots that were with him, saying, "Fight ye not with small nor great, save only the king of Yashara only." We only want him. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, "It is the king of Yashara." Therefore, they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out to Yahuwah, and he helped him. And all he that good. Go to chapter nineteen. Y'all know that part. He got hit in the side, and he died at the going down of the sun. Nineteen and one. Now let's look what Yah told Jehoshaphat for fooling with this nigga. I want you to see what he told him for fooling with this nigga. They say he holds the fact that the Malachi Yehuda returned to his house in Shalom to Jerusalem. Uh huh. And Yehuda, the son of Hanah, the seer went out to meet him. And what did he say? He said unto Jehoshaphat, Should thou help the ungodly? Should you help who? The ungodly. Should you help who? The ungodly. Now, who was that ungodly who he helped? Ahab. He helped Ahab. He ain't had no business fooling with Ahab. Not in that capacity. Go ahead. And. And 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 love them that hate you. Uh huh. Therefore, is derived the upon thee from before you. Now this man say, should you love them that hate you? <laughs> Doing that seem like that's a contradiction of what the master said. Let's look at what the master said in Matthew five and forty four. Because it's not a contradiction what the master said. He said, should you love them that hate you? Ain't no way in the world you should love nobody that hate y'all. That's retarded. Especially when you got Psalm one thirty nine say, those that are your enemies, I hate them with a perfect hatred. I don't fool with that nigga. Basically, it's all it means. I don't fool with him. Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love who? Love your enemies. And who else? And bless them that curse you. And do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. Did Ahab despitefully use Jehoshaphat? Mm -hmm. He didn't use that man. He didn't use that man because Jehoshaphat volunteered. But I'm saying he asked him because he was trying to use him. But he didn't despitefully use, despitefully use somebody. Jehoshaphat was with it. He said, my people are your people. My horses are your horses. You know what I'm saying? He, was, Je, was Ahab Jehoshaphat's enemy? Did he curse him? There was no beef between them at all. You know what I'm saying? Jehoshaphat came up and said, you need my help. I'm winning the world. Is there any other prophets here beside these? Jehoshaphat was with it. You know what I'm saying? So there's a difference when you see that he told you love your enemies, meaning love somebody who do you wrong or treat you evil like y'all do. He didn't tell you to love those that hate him, though. Go and give him that Psalms 139 and 20, man. Screw it. Because he said, now you got wrath from y'all because you love, you help the ungodly and love them that hate y'all. She sounds so strong with it. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. They do what? Take thy name in vain. Ooh. Do not I hate them, O you Do I not what? Do I not I hate them that hate thee? That hate thee? Am I and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Mm. I hate them with the perfect hatred. Mm -hmm. I count them enemies. <laughs> Now, if he say a perfect hatred, you know this is a complete, this means this is mature. This ain't no, I hate you, I'm going to kill you when I see you, nigga. I don't fool with you. 
I do not approve nor accept your works or behavior. You take my Elohim's name in vain. You know what I'm saying? You rise up against him. I don't fool with you. You know what I'm saying? That's all that means. That ain't mean you walk around here spitting on people talking about how much you hate them. You know what I'm saying? That ain't what that means. He said a perfect hatred. Let's see what the word perfect is in that word. What y'all think that could mean to have a perfect hatred? Oh, no, nah, he was like this here. It ain't meat to give the children bread at all. He didn't necessarily hate her. I, I don't fool with you, though, cuz. Hold on, I got to, and I'm steady hitting the wrong verse every time. That word is uh, tack left. It says in perfection, consummation, completion, completeness, or an end. You know what I'm saying? I don't got that. No origin. No origin. And if a complete, you got a complete hate, you got to realize something, right? Go ahead, what that is? Psalm 7, Psalm 9 or something? Well, he say that he angry with the wicked every day. Y'all, we could give him Psalm 45. And about four. Now, this don't mean you walk around treating it, but we're looking at it as the example of a... Jehoshaphat went and helped a person who he know was against Yah. And Yah held that to Jehoshaphat's charge and told him that he would have wars because he had done this. Yah was not pleased with that. He spared Jehoshaphat's life and didn't kill him. He was not pleased with him assisting this man. Go ahead. It says, and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of the truth. And meekness and righteousness. And thy hands shall teach thee terrible things. Thy arrows are sharp in thy heart of the king's enemies. Thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and thou hatest wickedness. He hate, that's why he said those that do that, I hate them with a perfect hatred. Because my Elohim, he hates wickedness. So of course, he hates Ahab. Remember, he's already pronounced what he going to do to Ahab. So Jehoshaphat, you've been walking in my way. You're supposed to have enough wisdom to know that you're not going to assist this man in anything. Now come back to 2 Chronicles 19 and look at verse 3 and look what he said about him. And nevertheless, there are good things. He said, but nevertheless, there's some good things in you. Though. And that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land mm -hmm. and hast prepared thy heart to seek Elohim. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat dwelled at Jerusalem and he went out again through the people from Beersheba unto Mount Ephraim mm -hmm. and brought them back into Yahuwah, Elohim their father. Mm -hmm. And he set judges in the land throughout the fence cities of Yehuda city by city. Now notice in verse 4 he said he went out to cause the people to repent or to return. Go ahead. And he said unto the judges, take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for Yahuwah who is with you in the judges. So now he's setting up judges. Now let's go look in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 about judges. Yeah, he telling me he's transgressed. But that's what I'm talking about. Even though he didn't do no wrong by this man, he wasn't supposed to fool. He wasn't supposed to fool with him because he was a sinner, and he know he wasn't supposed to fool with him. But he wasn't Jehoshaphat's direct enemy. He didn't do anything directly to Jehoshaphat. No, he was being dumb. He didn't think it was anything wrong with what he was doing. It ain't no big deal for you to help him, even though you got to realize, son, those songs were written while, you know what I'm saying? The songs of David were on record. So he's it's quite possibly that he was aware of what we call the 139th division of songs. Or he might have been aware of what we call the 101st one, where he said, I won't even know a wicked person. You know what I'm saying? It's like I told you, like it, it, it's certain things, right? That if we sit back and discuss it, on 
Like a nigga can't tell you just, hey, if nigga ain't in the word, just take him and throw him in the dumpster. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't tell you that. You know what I'm talking about? But there, there has to be some manner of separation from certain people, and it's all through the word. And when you mention it, that's what people, you know, oh, you sound cultish or this, that, that, and the third. I can't tell you who to talk to or who not to talk to. I can't tell you who to see or who not to see. But what you laughing at, man? You laughing at that baby? Mm -hmm. I said, don't be laughing at that baby, man. Huh? And he just lost the candy. Oh. Um. Oh, you be alright. So, you, when you when you look at that, right, you know what I mean? You can't tell people who to deal with or not to deal with. But when you turn around and you look at the word supposed to cause some manner of elevation or separation away from certain things. You know what I'm saying? It's just a natural progress. It's just naturally what occurs. It's just naturally what happens. Some people do it. Some people don't. You know what I'm saying? The dealing with or, or not dealing with for certain people can end up being detrimental to your eternal soul salvation in a lot of instances. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that no matter how much you love them, as poor as your soul is concerned, they don't mean you no good. I had a lot of, I, I heard God was like, one way, he said he felt like he was a watchman. He felt like he got to warn the people. Who, your homeboy that was smoking weed? Who house was that? <laughs> yeah. I already know the way, because that's the only thing he know that can be on that. <laughs> <laughs> you sure already know what's up with that, though. I mean, they say you were watching. What are you watching for? Watching for the weed man to come drop off that quarter side? Nah, nah, nah. He ain't talking about like. No, no, no. Definitely ain't talking about him. Definitely ain't talking about him. He said he be around, but he feel like he got to drop, drop the seeds. Nah, he be around, but he be. Doing stuff they doing, that's why you be right. But my thing is, is how you gonna drop a seed on a nigga before you drop it on yourself? You know what I'm saying? Like, boy, I'm finna start eight, boy. Y'all boy need to stop smoking crack over here, boy. Yeah, pat me in my head a little. How you looking at it? And why you ain't around righteous people? That's that, that what you're trying to do. Like this here, right? Now let's see, let me let me get your understanding on this here, right? Number one, if you're going to say sinners, of course you got to go out where they at. You got to sit down and kick it with them. Draw some knowledge on them. I don't got to hang with you, though. See, nigga feel like this here. See, this is where a fake nigga come in at. See, how the people going to know we got to love them? I ain't got to love that nigga. Do you know what I'm saying? I love them because I love them enough to tell them the truth. I ain't got to hang with him to make. Because you know what I'm doing? I'm emboldening him in his behavior. That's the, that's the that's okay, partake. Look at I screw partake and me just hanging with I done had a little jit the other night, I finna drop him off. He said, Yeah man, I left my ID in the store, man. You can uh pull to this gate and buy me a pack of cigarettes. No, I cannot. That nigga looked at me crazy. I said, nah, bro, I don't believe in none of that. There, I can't buy you no cigarettes. I said, if I buy you these pack of cigarettes, you know what I ought to do? Smoke them with you. Do you know what I'm talking about? I might as well go ahead and smoke them with you. Go ahead and let me get ten of them. Let me get half that pack of shoot. I might as well. No. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm riding, the people say, "Can you stop me to the store?" You paying me for the ride. This ain't personal. I don't care what you go. That's your business. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. You ain't got to tell me. I gotta go to the store. Guess I don't care what you go. I don't care if you go to the store grocery shop. You know what I'm talking about? I'm getting paid either way. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Long, you robbed the place. I got <laughs> I bet I pull I can't go back to prison on that one. Not I said the cat. They're gonna be like, oh y'all were just Uber and he said, no, nah, buddy. <laughs> Shot. Where you going? Shoot home. <laughs> you not coming with me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I done had some people, well, I ain't realized until I got them there. Well, I say halfway through it, them niggas going to buy dope. You know what I'm talking about? Because I drive late at night, so I already know that nigga going to the trap. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you buying. You could just be saying, you. I can't say you buying drugs. I know you buying drugs. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, that's on you, buddy. You get caught with that dope, you going to jail for it. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You going to jail for it. Light is here, but a suitcase. I don't know what to take. You know what I'm saying? But like I had a lot of people homeboy like, yeah, man, buy me a pack of Newport. My homeboy was like, you know that nigga ain't finna buy you no cigarette, boy. That nigga ain't on that. Well, I'm not buying you no cigarette. I'm not even finna sit around you niggas while you doing stuff. You ain't got no business. Because I might as well do it with you. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be like, well, I'm gonna go to the club with y'all. I ain't gonna drink, but I'm gonna just be here. Nigga, I ain't even supposed to be here tonight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be in here. What is in here for me? That's why people say, oh man, your God, everything that's fun, he say you can't do it. Yeah, and everything that burned, you do it. And I can't go. You know what I'm saying? I can't go out like that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't go to the club before the word, so you know I don't care about it now. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not coming in here, nigga, like, yeah, boy, we going to sudden and sudden. You going by yourself. What am I going to do in here for? They playing music I don't listen to. Half butt nigga, ho, you are human. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting there. I mean, straight up and down, though. Nigga, hey, the word is the word, right? But guess what, though? You still flesh and blood. So if it's half naked hoes in here gyrating, you know what I'm talking about? You setting yourself up for failure. You know what I'm talking about? You is a man, I hope. A heterosexual man. I hope you like women. Because you see some women around here dropping it like it's hot. You gonna be like this here. And you like, shoot, that does not affect me. That nigga's gay. You know what I'm talking about? That nigga is gay. You know what I'm saying? If you a woman and you see a nigga walk around, you don't need to be around there and that. You're going to mess yourself up. Then you're going to be like this here. You already know what's coming. Mike Wallace. Mike Douglas. <laughs> Only man Mike ever made me more. Mike Douglas. And what happened? I <laughs> you around people who drinking and you and you got an issue with that though. You don't you gotta have enough sense to that. He say he don't go blessed is the man that don't go in the way of sinners. How are we gonna say we blessed and you going the route that sinners going? You are lying. You can't make this man bless you when he say you if you go in the way of sinners, you're not blessed. This is what the word says. It's not my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's what he prescribed, that's what he laid down. You blessed when you don't do it. So if I do do it, I'm the opposite of blessed, which means I'm cursed, I'm damned, I'm set for destruction. Woe is upon my head. And people don't want to hear that type of stuff because it make you have to sit back and evaluate certain things and certain people that you may not want to evaluate. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, man. You got to make the decision. You got to make the choice. It's your soul. I can only tell you what I would do if I'm asked. Because if you don't ask, I'm not going to tell you. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to drop unsolicited advice on you. You know what I'm saying? You don't ask, I ain't going to tell you. You ask me, I'm going to tell you. If you don't want to hear it, I'm going to tell you it's, it is what it is. Come on, man. Where you at? Yeah, chapter 5, verse 1. Let's roll. It says, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Oh, man. And such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Well, he said, they ain't even named. He said, boy, the Gentile don't even play them type of games. Nigga around here hitting the daddy wife. Ain't that what it just said? He said, he said, read that again. This is how he said it. Paul. Paul sound appalled by that. That boy said it is it is reported commonly that there is. He said commonly. That is fornication. Hold on, hold on. This is what he said. He said it's reported commonly. This is a regular occurrence with you niggas. This is how y'all get down. Boy, you know around there, boy, you know, boy, you know James been around there laying with his daddy. Why? Why? Shoot, Tim do it too. Hope it ain't his mama. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what the law says You shall not defile what Your father's bed Your father's cop And who we know amongst our people did it Who amongst our people did it David's son did it And Reuben did it too And what that caused to happen when Reuben did it What ended up happening He lost his birthright He lost his birthright behind that how you go around here and he now, don't grant it now he ain't lay with Rachel or uh, 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 Leah he went with one of the handmaids he ain't go too far he ain't lay with his mammy <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about ain't nobody from that, I hope not shoot a Gentile was doing it though but now the fact now he said he didn't even say he said they don't even get out like that and boy hold on now cause boy we know boy if you don't know nothing else boy you already know the boy, them, them, them slew foots boy they get it in they ain't got no they don't care them niggas there do not care you know what I'm talking about them super don't care, but them don't care, but they go ahead and shoot. Mommy looking good. Go ahead. Yeah, that's why they say that's why he cursed him. And that's a reasonable assumption on their part. Just because how it's stated, it's reasonable for them to think that way. I wouldn't be mad at him for that. No, I wouldn't be mad at him. No, he just looked at him uh, according to what He's he around here looking at him. Boy, pop hanging and swinging. Oh, he mad at the bastard, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was. 
<laughs> they had the bats that only because it said that they walked backwards to cover I him up. It, like, like, it could have been. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no saying. Straight up now, he drunk, yeah, pop butt naked. You know, anybody here, you know, here might have been old freaking nigga. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 pop laying there drunk like this here. Look at it, it's extended, nasty bastard. <laughs> 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 Come on, babe. <laughs> Keep going. Read that verse again, though. Hey, children, 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 children. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> it says, there is reported commonly that is fornication among you, and such fornication as this is not so much been named among He said, this type of fornication, the Gentiles don't even do this here. That's bad now. That one should have his father's wife. Well, you ain't got no business. Well, how you going to sit back and look at mama or not? This could be your mammy. You want your mama? You know, I law talk about that in, Le in Leviticus 20. You want your mama? Well, you know how nasty you got to be to sit back and look at mama fine. He said the Gentiles don't even get down like this. So you know who he talking to in this instance. If he say this ain't named among the Gentiles, he talking to you. It said, ye are puffed up and have not rather mourn that he that hath... You are what? You have not mourn. He said you puffed up. What y'all think this mean when he say you puffed up and you haven't what? And you have not rather mourn. Go ahead. That he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. Woo! Now what y'all think this could mean? He said you puffed up, you ain't mourn. That means you doing it with pride. You doing it with pride. That's what he said, right? He said, when we go look in the book of Nehemiah, when they read the book of the Lord of them people, what did they do? They weep and mourn and, and rent their clothes. Mm -hmm. The book say blessed are those that what? Mourn. They'll be confident. You know, a lot of people, and that goes back to what's in Ezekiel 36. You ain't got no shame in your sin. We just seen not too long ago, nigga's sin came up, nigga was puffed up in the sin. That man say what? He got to get rid of man. Now what the law say, get that evil from amongst you. Paul ain't sit back and say hang with that nigga. He said, get that nasty battle from my body here. This nigga sleeping with his mammy. He said, you have done this deed. And you don't need, and you don't want it taken away from among you. You ain't even got rid of this nigga. <laughs> See, that's another thing that people don't sit back and look at too, right? Y'all know what the law say. The law say a nigga commit certain sin, he supposed to be killed to get that evil from amongst you. There's certain things that nigga supposed to do. That, that way he getting it from, you supposed to cut him off. You know what I'm saying? Not cut it, not to say you cutting this person off from y'all because nobody has that ability, but that you removing them from amongst the congregation. And again, that's another thing that's a hard thing for people to swallow because they feel like, how can you talk somebody out or, or get somebody out? The only way you're supposed to remove somebody from the congregation is for sin. Not because they said something you didn't like, not because they did something you didn't like, but because of sin. And it's not just when they do it the first time. You know what I'm saying? It has to be a pattern of it. Because you just don't sit back and toss them out after one. That's not long suffering and patience. You know what I'm saying? Mercy nor forgiveness. It has to be a pattern of it. This man saying, and then the main reason why he said getting it from amongst them, when it's brought to them, they're not even repenting. They puffed up in their pride. Like, so what, nigga? Yeah, I did it. What? When they got you at, oh, well. You have to watch certain attitudes when you hear those certain, because that's pride. You not really shamed by what you did. It's false humility. When you acknowledge you did it, but your attitude is, oh, well, it's done now. That's not a good attitude to have. Go ahead, sir. It says, for I barely, as absent in body, but present in rule, I have judged already. He judged already. Though so I were present concerning him that have so done this deed. Mm. In the name of our master, Yahushua Mashiach. Oh, we in the wrong place, but it worked out well anyway. Because that's exactly what Jehoshaphat and Ahab had going on, did it not? Go ahead. It worked out well anyway. Go ahead. Say when ye are gathered together and my rule out with the power of our master Israel Mashiach to deliver such and one unto the time for the destruction of the flesh, that the rule out may be saved in the day of the master Yahushua. Give me chapter six. Chapter six is what we want. But it worked out well either way. Six and one. Six and one. There any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust. So you got an issue. Remember, right? He said that the judgment is of Yah's. Right? We 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 read out of Second Chronicles nineteen. He told them that they have that let the fear of Yah be on them, 
Well, to take heed and don't judge for man but for y'all. I'm going to tell you something, right? I done had this happen. A nigga might think I'll say something, and I'm saying it because uh, that's my personal opinion of fear. The master told you in John chapter 7, verse 24, don't judge according to appearance, judge righteous judgment. So I'm going to judge things according to the word. You know what I'm saying? That's how you got to judge things, is according to the word. If you judge and move according to the word, you are going to be correct more times than you will be wrong. Truth be told, if you judge and move by the word 100% of the time, you will never be wrong. And it's not because you're wrong or you're right. It's because Yah is right and Yah is not wrong. That's why people say, oh, that nigga think he always does. No, man. If you judge according to the word, you will always be right because Yah's word is right. You know what I'm saying? And most people are not you both people are not used to people who actually judge according to the word. Cause if you judge, if you come and say, hey man, woo 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 woo, and you like, okay, according, you ain't even gotta say according to the word. You give your, your judgment based off the word, and niggas think, oh, that's your personal opinion. How? Where did you get that from? If you didn't really want to know want proper judgment, why did you ask for it? You know what I'm saying? You really wanted somebody to tell you what you wanted to hear. You really wanted somebody to use the word to judge it according to what you wanted to do. If the word say you can't do it, then the word say you can't do it. If the word say you're wrong, then you're wrong. If the word say you can, then you can. If the word say you're right, then you're right. And I'm be honest with you, people get mad when you judge according to the word. Because truth be told, they can speak against you. They can't speak against the word. You know what I'm saying? That's why people don't want, you know what people tell you? I want to hear your opinion. That's what a nigga say, I want to hear your opinion. You're always quoting that Bible. Tell me something else. Or even niggas in the word, no, nah, uh, that's just how you feel. Okay, that's how I feel then, man. That's how you feel, that's, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Words to the word. You don't change because that's what you want. Come on, man. It say your steaming is not good. It ain't good. No, you. I'm sorry. We had two chapter two, chapter six too. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Mm -hmm. Know ye not that we shall judge Malachim? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life. Set them to judge who are at least esteemed. that go right back to Deuteronomy chapter one. We've looked at this before. You gotta judge. You gotta, and the only way you could be able to know how to judge something is you gotta know the word. If you don't know the word, how could you judge? Then you gotta realize you judging for Yah, not for man. Niggas make judgments based on who it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's my art, man. So what? So you gonna go to hell with that nigga? Come on back to St. Chronicles 19. You gonna go to hell with a nigga to judge according to cause that's your heart. That's your sister. That's your homeboy. That's dumb. That's dumb. I wouldn't care who it was. If you wrong, nigga, you wrong. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what it is. That just enable a nigga to keep doing the stupid stuff he doing. That's what niggas like. Somebody to enable them. Make me feel good about being evil. Go ahead. Nigga coughing like you finna die. Ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. Come on, man. At least we can get through chapter 20. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, 31. 19 and 7, sir. In Second Chronicles. Oh. Oh, yeah, we did. Alright, it says, Wherefore, now let the fear of you be upon you. Take heed and do it. For if there is no iniquity with you who are Elohim, no respect to a person. Ain't no sin with him, and ain't no respect to a person. No so, taking of gifts. And ain't no taking of gifts. So if you're going to judge, you got to remember that. Ain't can't be no sin in your judgment. Can't be no respect to persons in your judgment. And you definitely can't take nothing from a nigga to tell him what he want to hear. Go ahead. It says, Moreover in Jerusalem, the Jehoshaphat set up the Levites of, of the priests. 
and of the chief fathers of Yashrael for the judgment of Yahuwah and for the controversy mm -hmm. when they return to Jerusalem. And what did he tell him to do it with? And he charged him saying, thus shall he do in the fear of Yahuwah faithfully and with a perfect heart. With a perfect what? A perfect heart. You got to be faithful and you got to go and get me 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, I believe. What word are you talking about? Perfect. Yeah, it's probably going to be the regular word. Oh, no, Kira said somebody baby died after getting kissed by somebody who had herpes. That's unfortunate. Hey, nigga died from a herpes kiss. That's messed up. I don't know what it was. I'm just going to see if they say the same thing with the clipboard. No, I say Shalom. Right. Complete, safe. <laughs> Covenant of peace. You know, it's three different words for purpose. This one said, that one, it said loyal. But... When he said that with a perfect heart, that means uh, uh, basically you got to be in covenant with Yah. That's why this makes sense what we're going to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Let a man account for us as ministers of the Mashiach and stewards of the mysteries of Elohim. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. God found what? Faithful. That was the same thing he said for those that judge. They got to be faithful and they got to have a perfect and complete heart. It's a lot of dudes want to preach word and they ain't even faithful. You know what's the key point? What's the first, if you think of somebody who's faithful, what's the number one attribute they got to possess? Yeah, that too. But it's one, but for somebody to be faithful, it's one thing they don't do. There's one thing they don't do. Yeah. Go and give me number 23 and 19. Yeah, they definitely don't do that. But for, 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 to be faithful to somebody, it's one attribute that you know they won't do. Go ahead, man. Number 23 and 19. Alim is not a man that he should lie. Faithful people don't tell lies. They keep their word. That's why Yah is faithful. Why? Because he keep his word. You can't, you can't turn around and say you a steward of Alim and you a liar. That shows right there you're not faithful. Because you can't even, you ain't faithful enough to tell the truth. Go ahead, man. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? What you eat, potato bread, boy? And shall it not make it eat good? potato bread. Go ahead, man. Read it all over again. Good stuff. It said, Elohim is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I receive... That's good. First Corinthians chapter 10, right? About verse 13. Now, right, wouldn't you, wouldn't you deem somebody who's faithful to be a person of their word? So how you gonna be a steward of Allah? How you gonna preach the word and hold a man's word and you're not faithful? Now you done made the word a lie because you a liar to fit yourself in somewhere where you don't fit. That's why he gave, and I mention that because this is the instruction that Yah, who, Yah has judged, Jehoshaphat has judged that if you gonna judge, you need to be faithful and you need to have a perfect heart to do this. Paul come back and tell you the stewards of Allah, they faithful. You know what I'm saying? When you look at everybody in this world, they were faithful to y'all. You know what I'm saying? That was because it wasn't Abraham faithful. What about Jacob? Could we say David was? Shoot. Even Jehoshaphat, to a certain extent, he had his mis mis misfires in there. Solomon was too. He just had a misfire. It was a real big misfire, but it was a misfire nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? Peter was faithful. That goes along the lines of what we were talking about with Peter. When the master asked him that he loved him. You know what I'm saying? And you know what, Peter? Nowhere in the book do you read anywhere where Peter say, Yahusha, I love you. When he asked him, Peter was real perturbed. Like, man, you know I love you. Why you keep asking me that? You know what I'm saying? Just like I say, you don't read nowhere in the book where Hamashia told us over and over again that he loved us. We as human beings and natural beings, we want that reassurance to, to be told that you're loved. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, very rarely, Yah tells us that he loves us. But it's only in, retro, in retrospect of what he has done so you can understand the love that he had for us. He just didn't come repeatedly tell you, Israel, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's when we did something stupid 
And then he manifested his love towards us and he would let it, have I not loved you? Have I not done this? Have I not done this? The master of it, because they were showing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I say, that in the natural, and I can't speak for previous generations of, of, of millenniums, but I can see from the time that I've been alive, human beings need that reassurance that somebody loves them. We constantly want to be told that. You know what I'm saying? Because you remember, you can look at people, men from the 50s and 60s, they rarely ever told their children that they loved them. You know what I'm saying? Most of them kids who came up in that time period, they knew their parents loved them. They knew their daddy loved them, but he didn't necessarily express that verbally. He showed it in their actions, and then a lot of kids came up hurt because they, my daddy never loved me, he never told me he loved me, this, that, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? Really emotionally weak people to a certain extent. Do you know what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah, that one too. You know what I'm saying? You just thought, I forgot all about that one. I forgot we even seen that. Then. Yeah, that's how whack it was. I, it wasn't a bad movie. Not memorable at all. You know what I'm saying? It's not a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Great movies are very memorable. It's not, it's not, the level again. Yeah. I mean, when you say that, that's where we bought my answer. It's very memorable. It's not a bad movie. It's not a movie I would watch again. Oh. Or over and over again. I might cut her off with the head. I want to watch Titanic over again. It would be movie. I don't really remember it like that. That nigga say, Daddy. Yeah, that nigga was sleep. Yeah, that, that's another icing on the cake. That don't necessarily mean that you could have been tired. <laughs> My point is, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. I'm not a comic book movie type of dude, so. Yeah, anyway, it's just our opinions, bro. It doesn't matter. I was awake for the whole I'm night. I'm not gonna pause you on a good movie, period. You, Indeed, it, it, the movie the movie was played like a play. Play, play, so I can't vouch for anything else. I mean, it, it, and I mean, like I say, it's not a bad movie, but neither for movie you want something that's going to hold your attention. This, that, and the third. The movie was executed like a stage play. You know what I'm saying? It's a decent story. Like I said, I couldn't watch that movie over and over. It wasn't entertaining. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be entertaining. Right, that's what I'm saying. So when I go to the movies, I'm going for entertainment solely. If I'm paying money, solely entertainment. Anything else? You like that turn? I ain't going to sleep on that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, well, you went to sleep on everything. Then. I, you're right, man. I did go to sleep. You were right next to me. I did. I don't know because I ain't go. Because I ain't want to see it in the first place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Better than love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what he say? He say, Daddy, how come you don't love me? And you know what he ran him down to him? But he, he pretty much what he ran down to him. What you mean I don't love you, nigga? I feed you, right? I clothe you, right? But the thing that's sitting back looking at it is, is that we want that emotional connection with it. I don't know how people were in previous generations if they desired or they necessarily needed that. I can't speak to that. You know what I'm saying? But I can say I know from my time being alive, it, people seem to need that. Some people done been with a woman and that woman wanted you to tell you, wanted you to tell her that you loved her repeatedly. Which in my estimation and opinion, there's something going on inside of her where she feel like she needs that reassurance from you that you love her. You know what I'm saying? So, but nevertheless, come on, man. Well, yeah. I said you want a more discovery? No. Ten, right? Yeah, we're in, yeah we want a ten and thirteen. Oh, I said you want more. You hadn't written them yet. And thirteen. It says there has no temptation taking you, but such is a common to man. But Elohim is faithful. He's what? Faithful. Mm. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that? You That's why we and that goes right back to what we were talking about earlier. With Elohim, all things are possible because He is faithful. He said he's so mercy to those that love him and keep his commandments that take hold to his covenant. He is faithful. All you have to do is be faithful to him. He is a man of his word. He's not going to break his word. He's not going to do that. Whether it be good or whether it be evil on you. He's not going to break his word. You know what I'm saying? But when you sit back and look at it is you've got to be faithful. Come on back to uh, 2 Chronicles 19. Sir. And we're in verse 10. It says, and what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities between blood and blood between law and commandment statutes and judgment ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against you and so wrath come upon you and upon your brother this doing ye shall not trust now let's now let's ask a question right I'm ask y'all a question right because we're going to read into something in moab and ammon in, in chapter 20. 
It said, Jehoshaphat, right, that he helped ungodly and loved them that hate Yah, therefore wrath was upon him, he had wars. How can we relate this to the master? I want you to read verse 1 and chapter 20 to give him a framework of why I'm asking this question. Second Chronicles 20 and 1. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon with them with them other beside beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Mm -hmm. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against There come a great what? A multitude against mm -hmm. them from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek Yehudah and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Yehudah. Mm -hmm. And Yehudah gathered themselves together to ask help of Yehudah. Even out of all the cities of Yehuda, they came to seek Yehuda. Good, that's good. So how does that pertain to the master? That verse 1 in Second Chronicles 19. And then swinging, you see what Jehoshaphat did when trouble came. What did he do? He proclaimed the fast and he sought the Yah and all the people did too. Mm -hmm. But how does these people rising up to battle against him pertain to what's in verse 1 of the 19th chapter, which pertains to Amasha? He said, you help the ungodly and those that hate Yah. He said, therefore, wrath of Yahuwah is on you. Yeah, let's go and get it. Let's look at Luke 5 and 28. And then after that, Romans 5 and, uh, hey, what are them niggas doing? Cleaning the floor? 5 and 1. Oh, no. That's, that's a head drive in the bathroom. That's on wow. <laughs> they making sure they dry, though, isn't it? Said what five? Luke five and twenty-eight. It says, and he let all, and he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Yahushua answered, said unto them. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So he loving those that hate Yah and is helping the ungodly. Therefore, wrath end up coming on his head from Yah. Even that great multitude that came out against him with swords and staves. This is again manifesting the love of Yahuwah because you got to remember, son, the master was slain from the foundation of the world, correct? So that means he already know that he's going to have to take on the punishment that Jehoshaphat took on. Remember he said, he said there's some good in you because you took down the idols and set up judges and sent people to teach the word. Did not the master do the same thing? See, that's where you come around and you see the parallels and the split of the kingdom and the, rep and the, and the relevance and all the things that come from that. Come on to uh, what I just uh, Romans 5, man. Give me verse 1. See, that's the love of Elohim. What type of man would knowingly take wrath on his head? For helping people that should not have been helped. Remember he said we were dead in trespasses and sins. It's favor you are saved. You should have not been helped. I should not help you to destroy the Syrians. I'm going to do it anyway. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have shalom with Elohim, who are a master. They justified by what? By faith. There's too many people in this book get justified by faith and not the law. Nigga, swear that law gonna save them fringes. You gonna wear half fringes on straight in hell. Do you know what I'm talking about? Nigga, like, how are you going against the law? He said forever throughout generations. If, if we were to pull the law right now, don't it say Aaron would be a priest throughout all your generations? But Aaron's not a priest throughout all your generations, now is he? So is Yah a liar? No, he's not. And dudes don't understand that. I'm wearing my locks. All the priests supposed to have locks. I don't know what priest you is. You a priest to Aaron. Clearly, you going to hell. That priesthood, and the reason why I say that because that priesthood, when I say hell in this instance, meaning the grave, you going straight to the dust, son. That priesthood is over with. That priesthood don't have no effect, no power for you. Ain't nobody going in the year in the in the in the set apart, set apart, offering sins for himself and then for the people every year for you. 
You got dude that say you don't need no offense. So why he got a day of atonement? This man going in here doing this every year and that wasn't needed. Anybody got no scapegoats for you, nigga? Come on, man. Go ahead. It says, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the esteem of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we esteem in tribulations also. You esteem in what? Tribulations also. More that tribulation work in patience. It work what? Patience. What else? And patience experience. What else? And experience hope. Uh -huh. And hope make him not ashamed. Don't make a shame. Because the love of Elohim is shared abroad in our hearts. That's why I go back. I go back to that Ezekiel 37 when the people said their hope was gone. And our parts are dried. And he had to restore their hope because the hope in Elohim, you'll never be ashamed. you only be ashamed when you got hope in your sin and hope in the world. But hope in Elohim, you'll never be ashamed. Go ahead. It says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, the Mashiach died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man's son will even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But Elohim commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Mashiach died for so us. He loved the ungodly and helped those that hated Yah, so therefore that wrath had to come on his head. It had to come on his head. Or the book is a lie. So when we see the Ammonites and all those that join with him, this the scribes and the priests and the Romans rising up against this man to go to battle. It said he saw the fast though to overcome him. Did the master seek a fast? Who know how he saw the fast? We dealt with this one year on, on Day of Atonement, how he did that. How did the master seek a fast? Cause he fasted on the Day of Atonement. Well fasted as on the Day of Atonement. When you look at it, he ate it and he drank, he took he partook because remember he the one broke the bread and blessed it in the first place. He the one passed the cup around in the first place. Because remember how we know he partook because he said, I will not partake of this fruit of the vine till I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. See, I know the latest thing, because I know another brother who talked about it, and then a the brother called me about it. He heard a little bit of that conversation. About brothers dealing with is is you is Yahusha really Alahim? Is the Elohim head singular or is it plural? Because a lot of people think you taking stuff away from the like somebody, you know, how is it his kingdom? And I think they forget what the law says that a father leaves an inheritance to his son and that son gets everything that the father has. And what we're telling this is that, yeah, y'all made the son, the son made everything else because it was for the son in the first place. And then when everything is complete, he's going to turn around and give it back to his father because it's his father's from the jump street, but I placed it in your hand. Because what I would tell them is, is that the Father himself can never dwell on the earth. Y'all know why the Father himself can never dwell on the earth? <coughs> and, that, that, and if he dwell on the earth, what's going to happen? Die. Everybody dies. No man can see his face and it ain't even just seeing his face. It's the sin. He's a consuming fire. He's a purifier. So if everything around him is sinful, everything around him must be consumed. Do you know what I'm saying? He stepped forth on this earth and his sin on this earth. Everybody dies. The problem is they not understanding is that when he was in the flesh, he was not Elohim. At that particular point, he was a man. You know what I'm saying? When he resurrected from the dead is when he returned. Because you got brothers who don't believe that he existed before he was manifested in the flesh. Like he just pulled somebody out of thin air that just was going to know everything to do. Not knowing that man was trained up from the job. I got to already be trained before I come do a job. How did man go come and fulfill the whole book and die and you just say, now you shall be here and do it. Now I'm saying, now you can do anything he want to do, but that don't even make sense for him. Because basically I'm feeding you the info as you go. Now for somebody who don't believe in the New Testament, it's irrelevant. For somebody who do, it said he was slain from the foundation of the world. If he was slain from the foundation of the world, that means the plan had to be given to him before the world was made. It had to be. The thing that nigga missing the alphabet point to this man, the law point to this man, the prophets point to this man, the Psalms point to this man, the Proverbs point to this man. Do you know what I'm saying? Everything is pointing to this man. Oh, oh, who was with him in the beginning? It was wisdom. Okay, you believe wisdom. Oh, see, I'm gonna show you. Get that get Genesis 37, man. Get Genesis 37 and 5. I'm gonna show you what a nigga tried to use to show that it was Genesis 1 and 26. It was really the angels there with him and it wasn't a Masha. Why would he even sit back and say that to an angel? 
let us make man in our image. So I'm going to sit here and talk to an army and say that? An army. An army. Because if you know he ain't talking to one Malachim, it's a host, it's an army. Niggas dumb. I see how they be getting got though. You said Genesis I said Job 37, 7, sir. You said Genesis. Yeah, you Job 37.5. I ain't did it twice today. <laughs> One time you heard the verse you wanted to hear. You good for that. And everybody you here can vouch for that. I ain't got it yet. What you want? I ain't done yet. What you want? What I want? I want a, uh, I want a uh, water burger with cheese. Large fry. I want a water burger with cheese. Can you handle that for me, please, sir? I ain't dry, sir. I got a book open. You want Joe Genesis? I want a water burger with cheese. And I don't want no Flemish burger neither. What you want, bro? Job 375. Make it Job 37 and, and, and 95. You know what they want to do 95? I seen somebody, nigga, pulling out books. Boy, books nigga ain't never seen. So much about the ascension of Yahoo Shah. I'm like, well, where you nigga find these books at? Alahim thunder marvelously with his voice. Great things does as he. You know what's funny? He say he thundered with his voice, and a mashiach is compared to that. Go here. Great things does he, which we cannot comprehend. Can't comprehend. For he said to the snow, "Be thou on the earth." Mm -hmm. Likewise to all small rain. Hold on, I think it's thirty-eight. Is it thirty-eight? Yes, yeah, thirty-eight. Thirty-eight, five. Who have laid the measures thereof, mm -hmm. if thou knowest? If you know. Or who have stretched the line upon it? Mm -hmm. where, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone See thereof? the key thing, who laid the cornerstone? We done dealt with this before. We know who the foundation, then let's listen to the next verse, what it say. It says, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. See, when they look at that, they see, see, they were there when the world was made, not Yahoo Shah. Not realizing who is the cornerstone. Who is the cornerstone? Well, you know, it is what it is. We didn't know that for man. Come on back to where we was at though. Second Chronicle chapter 20. It says that there came we have verse 2. It says and there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, There cometh the a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. Oh no, we got that. You write it down to verse 5. We in verse 6. We got to get ready to wrap up here. It says, and say, you who are Elohim of the fathers, art thou not Elohim of Shammai? Mm -hmm. And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? Mm -hmm. And in thy hands is there not power and Oh, my bad. We didn't read verse 5. It says, and Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Yehuda and Jerusalem, and in the house of Yehuda before the new court. Now what did he say? And Yehuda said, oh, our fathers are not the Elohim of heaven. And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? Mm -hmm. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our Elohim, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Yahshua, mm -hmm. and gave it to seed to the seed of Abraham, mm -hmm. thy friend forever? Mm -hmm. And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary there for thy name. Build the sanctuary. Got this out right. He say, build you a sanctuary for your name. Now we know that Yahweh Shah is a sanctuary which Yahuwah pitched and not man. But then you got to look at what's in 1 Corinthians 3 when he said, I'm a master builder. You know what I'm saying? And that you're the temple of Elohim that you built this for his name. That you destroyed yourself to rebuild yourself anew through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach for his name. Go ahead. It says, and it said, if when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, and pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house. And in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction when thou wilt hear and help. Remember Hebrews 5, it says he cried unto him with strong supplication and tears, and he was heard because he feared. The same thing with Jehoshaphat, right? But let's look at these three people that, that came up against him, and let's see who we can compare to them. Go ahead. And now behold, the children of Ammon, mm -hmm. and Moab, mm -hmm. and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Yahshua invade, when they came out of the land of Mizraim, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Mm -hmm. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession. 
which thou hast given us to What does Moab name mean? Of the Father. Of the Father. So if it's of the Father, who would Moab be representative of? No, nah, not in this instance. He say Moab, Ammon, and, and, and Mount Seir, or Edom, is coming up against him. No, that would be Yasharal. What does Ammon name mean? I think it's more than and you know who Seer will be representative of? Who got who got represented? Who, who who's the only person in this book that don't look like me or you that got said that they were part of that group? There's one man in that in the New Testament that got who who said to be an Idumian. Herod. And who was Herod, Herod representative of? The Romans, right? Mm -hmm. Did not the Romans come against this man too? Hold on now. Because they are the father. They are Yah. They are people. And Amon is tribal. And then when you look at that last, if you look at tribal, that's your chief priests and your scribes. Because they were the ones who were over the tribes. Because remember, these three people came up and they go into war against him. Remember, we talking about how he saw the fast. He he fat. Remember, they tried to give him stuff on the stake. He did what? He refused it. Do you know what I'm talking about? So he done proclaimed the fast. And he's seeking Yah in his fast. Because when he on the stake, is he not praying unto him? And you got these three people. Reason being, because it's got to line up with, a, with, with Jehoshaphat. He said, you love those that hated Yah, and you helped the ungodly. Therefore, you're going to have wrath, and you're going to have wars. And then he got a war. He got tribal, he got of the father, and he got red or ruddy coming against him. He got the Romans, he got Yasharal, and he got the chief tribe. Because remember, even though the, tribe, the scribes and chief priests are part of Yasharal, when you look at when it's described in the New Testament who took him down, they always separated. You know what I'm saying? Because they're the head of the tribes. They're the head of the people. You know what I'm talking about? Then you got those who are the father. Remember we read it earlier in John 1. He came unto his own. His own received him not. And then like I say, because Herod is called an Idumian, and there goes your Edom there. Not saying that Edom is white or this, that, and the third, but there goes your Edom there. Right or wrong? Because Herod was there. You want to see? Luke 23. Herod was there. But you would that bridge. I mean, so you're saying he, he wrong. But yeah. not Edom. Yeah. No, just say he out Yeah, it do. But we know he was over the Roman, and nine times out of ten, he probably just called him my Dumian, like Paul said he was a Roman. Because I lived there. Because yeah. I lived there. Not because I'm of that, because I lived there. I seen a, 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 a lady. I seen a lady post this today, right? When, when, when you hear American, what do you think? When you talk about people and somebody says they're an American, what's the first thing coming to your head? You, and guess what? And every other people got to be hyphenated. And that's what the lady had in, in her statement. White people don't say, I'm white American. I'm American. Yeah. Everybody else, African American, Latino American, Asian American, Arab American. I let you know that this is a white continent, a, a white country. Because when you hear American, white, there's no white American. There's no Caucasoid American, Caucasus American. Just American. It's America. But everybody else got a hyphenate. That means you're a stranger here. Say your land. Go ahead. Children. Children. Go ahead. We're at uh, Luke chapter 4. 23. It says, And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thy Luke 23 and 1, sir. Oh, I thought you said got to read where Herod's at. You know, Herod was desirous to see him. He was desirous. It said, the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that himself is a Mashiach and a Malik. Mm -hmm. And Pilate said, or well, Pilate asked him, saying, are thou the Malik of the Yahudim? Mm -hmm. And he answered him, 
Thou hast thou said. Then said Pilate to the chief priest. You said priest, to the chief priest and to the people, I mm -hmm. find no fault in this man. I don't find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirred up the people teaching throughout the Yahudim, beginning with Galilee in this place, to this place. And the pot and Pilate when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem. He's son of the Herod. So you all at him there. So you see what Pilate was doing? Pilate was trying to get it off of him. Go ahead. It said, when Herod saw Yerusha, he was exceedingly glad. Mm -hmm. For he was desired to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. All he wanted to see, he an unbeliever, so of course he going to want to see it. Go ahead. It said, when he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. He got, has a lot of questions. The master like this, who did cry? And when the chief priest and scribes stood and verbally accused him. When the chief priest and who? And the scribes. Mm. It said, Herod with... His men of war. With his men of what? With men of war. So there's a multitude coming against him. Set him at night and mocked him and arrayed him in gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Mm -hmm. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends. They were made what? Made friends together. For what cause? For before they were at enmity between themselves. Go ahead. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief scribes and the rulers of the people. And guess what? Them. You got Ammon, Edom, and Moab all right there ready to take this nigga down. They all there. And guess what? And Pilate and Herod became friends. They had beef before that. And they settled their beef on killing this black man. Cause get what you know. You, I hope y'all know that Ammon, Moab, and Edom ain't really roll together and get it, get it in with each other like that. They were not all down, but when it came down to taking Jehoshaphat, we gonna roll together. And that's what's gonna happen when it come down with it at the end. That people will make leagues with one another for only cause to kill y'all's people, not because they got love for each other. This nigga. Here. Come on back to chapter 20. We in verse 12. It says, O Elohim, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what, what to do. But our eye are upon thee. Your eyes are where? Are upon thee. Don't let your hope get lost. Now, where your eyes, why you know where your eyes need to be there? Colossians 3 and 1. Why your eyes need to be there? It says, If ye then be risen with Mashiach, seek those things which are above, where Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of Elohim. So would that mean your eyes would be upon him? Now wouldn't it? Go ahead. It says, set your affections on things above, not on things of the right. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Mashiach and Elohim. Many saying these slain shall live, because our hope is lost, and we're cut off for our parts. So I got to slay you so you can live, so that your hope can be restored in him. Come on back to St. Chronicle 20, man. It says, and all you who stood before you were with their little ones and their wives and their children. And then upon Jahazel, the son of Zedekiah, and the son of Benaiah, the son of Yehiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. He came in the Ruach of Yahuwah in the midst of the congregation. And he said, And guess what that is? When two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. Go ahead. It says, and he said, Hearken ye all you who the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou Malak Jehoshaphat. Thus said Jehovah unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but Elohim. That's what the master told Peter then, right? Was he afraid because of that great multitude? So you don't need to be afraid of no great multitude. You don't need to be afraid of anything, is what we talked about last night. Perfect love cast out fear. Go ahead. It said, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff, cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Yeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of Yahuwah. 
mm-hmm. with you. O Yehuda and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for Yehuda will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before Yehuda, worshiping Yehuda. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up and praised Yehuda, Allahim of Yashara, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And what did Jehoshaphat tell them? And Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Yehuda, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in Yehuda your Allahim. Believe in who? Yehuda your Allahim. Why? So shall ye be established. And what else? Believe his prophets, so shall ye prophet. That's good right there. We start right there. So praise y'all for y'all who shot in the word. Y'all really stood on anybody any question? The, we'll get to it because that story is longer. And you're also going to see that Jehoshaphat did it, joined himself to another wicked nigga after Ahab. Do you know what I'm saying? He got down with another wicked nigga after Ahab. And y'all bust him upside his head for that. Do you know what I'm saying? 